the kingship of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, their representations, all of the referenced representations of Nembe Kingdom. Gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, welcome and good morning once again. We are celebrating a king at 80. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in no time, His Majesty King Edmund Dakuru, Fellow of the Imperial College, Commander of the Order of the Niger, Mingi the Twelfth, Amainabo, and Treaty King of the whole of Nimbi Nation. His entrance will be any moment from now, and please you do him the honor, the honor that when his entrance is formally, formally pronounced, we will stand to welcome him. That is a cultural proof from all the way from Nembe in Bayasa State. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We announce the arrival of our celebrant, His Majesty, King Dr. Edmond Dakuru, Fellow of the Imperial College, Commander of the Order of the Niger, Mingi the Twelfth, Amainabo of Nimbe Kingdom. May we please rise to accord him that welcome he deserves. The solemnity and arrival of His Royal Majesty with the bell, the royal bell of Nembe Kingdom, Yamayanabo, His Majesty King Dr. Edmund Madwebebe Dakaru Mingi XII. With him, of course, the retinue, Queen Royale, and all of the royal representation from the palace and from the elect representation of community of Nembe Kingdom as the royal son of the hearth. We would now like to call, but just before we call for the national anthem, we'd like to respectfully ask that the entourage please be properly protocol to the seating in the hall. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
and even with the royal solemnity, we thank all of our Nembi mothers, mothers of Nembi kingdom, daughters of Nembi kingdom, how do you greet them? Chiefs of Nembe Kingdom. How do I greet the mothers? No. No. Noao. Thank you. And now for the national anthem. May we please respectfully ask Bethel Benjamin, can we all please rise for the national anthem of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Thank you. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call, obey. bound in freedom, peace, and unity, we'd like to request the opening prayers by Most Reverend Dr. Daniel C. Oko, President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, General Overseer of Christ Holy Church International, to please come up stage. We're welcoming our CAN President, the Most Reverend Dr. Daniel C. Oko, General Overseer, Christ Holy Church International. Good morning. Welcome, sir. Shall we pray? O oh Lord, the Heavenly Father, glory be to your name. We thank you, O oh Lord, we adore you for the life that you have given to us. Thank you, O Lord, for this nation, Nigeria. O Lord, a nation that you, O Lord, have blessed with abundance of human resources and material natural resources. O Lord, among these human resources which have blessed Nigeria is our own, his royal majesty, King Dr. Edmund Daukuru Mengi the Twelfth, the Amayanabo of Nembe Kingdom. O oh Lord, he is a gift that you have given to Nigeria. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for the impact that his life has made on the peace and development of this nation. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life that you have given to him. We thank you for the good health that you have given to him. And we thank you for today, as we have gathered to celebrate the life that you have given to this, our Father, our Brother, O Lord, and our Son. We thank you, O Lord, for sustaining him all these years in public life and in private life. Glory be to your name, O Lord, for the reputation that you gave to him that the enemies were not able to pull down. We thank you for his family. We thank you for this gathering. We pray, Father, that you, O Lord, will come amongst us O oh Lord, and may your children enjoy the blessedness of your heavenly presence in this place. So that all that we shall do will go according to your will. And your children will rejoice and glorify your name at the end of this event. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, our kind president. Your Excellencies, our Royal Fathers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, again, we welcome us to the 80th birthday of His Majesty, King Dr. Edmond Dakuru, Mingi XII, the Amenable of Nembe. We will, by the grace of God, establish a protocol 
of all who is here gathered, but you will permit us to collate the names and collate them properly. It is on that note, for three minutes, we would like to hear those wonderful drums that came from Nembe to celebrate their king. We will ask the Nembe Cultural Group to come and perform just for three minutes, and after which we shall start rolling. Please, the cultural group from Nembe, I believe they're out there. Could they come in quickly and just perform for the next three minutes? Can we please put our hands together for them? A clap is not like a clap for people celebrating 80 years of a wonderful man. The cultural group from Nembe, please, can you come in, please? Are they not ready? Okay, please let them come in, please. Kindly come up stage, please. Kindly come up stage. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, Nembe Kingdom is some um, people of the Niger Delta. 
a very distinctive royalty with their pageantry today celebrating their king the royal father of all fathers of the kingdom of Nembe. Celebrating an epoch moment in their history, in their trajectory here in the federal capital territory, all the way from Bayelsa State. And indeed, any moment. His Excellency, our Chief Host, the Executive Governor of Bielsa State, Chief Toyetiri, his entourage, his representation, everyone celebrating a principal king and traditional father, grandfather, royal father, and a father of kings, princes, and daughters royal, celebrating with the mothers, the queens, the daughters, the sons, the princes, our chiefs of Nembe Kingdom. Once again, welcoming all of the royal presence and pageant from all over the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our royal fathers, your excellencies, and of course, industry CEOs from the oil and gas sector of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, all of the Diplomatic Corps will welcome every one of the representations here today. Thank you. Please, a round of applause. Let's appreciate and celebrate with Nembe Kingdom today. Yes, yes, yes. Let's celebrate with them. And the prayer of the fathers from the very first to our present royal father be established as a prayer for community, for the genealogy of Nembe Kingdom, but best and blessed of all for the kingdoms of our nation, Nigeria. Thank you very much. Today, celebrating His Majesty. His Royal Majesty King Dr. Edmond Madwebebe Dakuru Mingi the 12th Amaniyanabo of Nembe Kingdom 80 years old Fellow of the Imperial College Commander of the Niger F-I-C-A-R-S-M Thank you, thank you, thank you Thank you. Thank you. Let's make it a celebration round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Culture is always a celebration. And the sound of our drums, our percussions, our shakers, but best of all, our trumpets. Hey, 
Thank you. Oh no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please a round of applause from everyone here celebrating. His Royal Majesty at 80 and the heralding of that pageant of celebrations with that cultural fanfare from the traditional tribute in dance and in the sounds of Nembe Kingdom on Wao. And I was reminded hey, because today as we have listened these are the sounds of celebration from the South South, from Bielsa, and from the kingdoms of kingdoms, Nembe, in Bielsa State, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Their Excellencies, former presidents are still expected, as well as the principal host and his representation, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Bielsa State, His Excellency, Chief Toye Diri. But we are not in waiting, we are in celebration. And that is how come this distinctive company of kings and queens and royalty today. We give first protocols by way of acknowledgement for this celebration. His Eminence Al Haji Dr. Mohammed Saad Abubakar, the third MNI CFR Sultan of Sokoto and Chairman. National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. Please, let's put our hands together and very properly acknowledge, celebrate, and welcome him. You are welcome, sir. We'd also like to celebrate and appreciate the co-chairman of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, none other than His Majesty, Oba Adeye Eniton Ogusi Ojaja, the second Ohni of Ife. Please, let's put our hands together and celebrate him. And you know what? We are celebrating 80 today. I don't know what age, but we'll be celebrating on Tuesday next week, his own birthday. Your Royal Majesty, you are welcome. We celebrate your presence. His Majesty, King Dr. Danderson Douglas Jaja, King Jaja of Opobo and Chairman of this event. Please let us properly celebrate him, appreciate him. Your Royal Highness, you are welcome. His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Yahaya Abubakar CFR, H. Sunupe, and Coordinating Committee Chairman from the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. Please, another round of applause as we properly distinguish and welcome our H. Sunupe. You are welcome, our Father. His Royal Highness Al Haji Aminu Ado Bayero, Emir of Kano. Please, let's put our hands together once again and celebrate all of the presence of the Royal Highnesses and this colossus cosmos of traditional chieftains. His Royal Majesty, Al Haji Matthew Okbalua, the Atta of Igala. Please, a round of applause for him as we appreciate and welcome. His Royal Majesty, General Felix Mujakburo, retired, MNI Orodier of Okbe and Chairman, Delta State Council of Traditional Rulers. Please, another round of applause as we appreciate and recognize and welcome him. His Majesty, King, Dr. Swanu T.Y. Baridam, J.P. Beneneme, Ancient Banga Kingdom. Please, let's put our hands together for him. In celebration and in royal welcome, he is the acting president of the Supreme Council, Ogoni Traditional Rulers. You are welcome. We welcome His Royal Majesty, King Bubaraye Dakolo Agada IV, Chairman by Elsa State Council of Traditional Rulers. My Royal Father, you are welcome. His Royal Majesty, 
King of Red, Dieter Spiff, and Mayanabo of Tuam Brass. Please let's put our hands together and welcome him. Thank you very much. My royal father, I celebrate you. His Royal Majesty, Oba Sunday Adeomi Onigogo of Igogo. Please let's put our hands together. Appreciate, welcome him. Thank you very much for your royal presence here today. His Royal Majesty, Ambassador Lawrence Agubuzu, the Chairman, Enugu State Council of Traditional Rulers. Another round of applause as we celebrate and welcome His Royal Highness and Majesty to this royal celebration at 80. Archbishop Dr. Daniel Oko, representing the King of Kings. His Royal Highness, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria. You are welcome. His Royal Majesty, Eze Joseph Nwabweke, the Chairman, Abia State Council of Traditional Rulers. Please let's welcome and appreciate Eze. Once again, you are welcome, my Royal Father. We also have with us His Royal Majesty, Eze Okeke, the Chairman, Enugu State Council of Traditional Rulers rulers. My father, royal, you are welcome. His Royal Highness, Chief Joseph Iyongu Achiaku, paramount ruler of Van de Kwea local government. Your Royal Majesty, you are welcome. Please help me appreciate and celebrate and welcome these royalties and their representation here today. His Royal Majesty, Obi Chukuka, Daniel Obudo JP, the OB of Atumaiga Kingdom, and the member Delta State Traditional Council of Shimili North Local Government Traditional Council. We welcome you, we celebrate you, and we thank you for your royal presence here today. Well, with all of these representations, as they come in, we continue to make that distinctive reference. My name is Ade Dayo Benjamin Zlani. I am a wife of Obumosho or your state. I'm a daughter of uh, Ogun State from Kentau Kejibo. And there's only one way in which we greet kings. And there's only one way we do it. So permit me to greet kings as daughters greet kings. Can you please put your hands together for her? She has greeted our royal fathers as a daughter who greet their fathers. Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as the names come in, so we should do the introduction. But please permit me to invite to make his opening remarks, our chairman for this very unique celebration, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please help welcome His Majesty, King, Dr. Dandison Douglas Jaja, Jackie V, Commander of the Federal Republic, distinguished service star of River State, Treaty King, Amayenabo and natural ruler of ancient Opopo Kingdom, immediate past chairman, River State Council of Traditional Rulers, Chancellor, Federal University, Dutse Katsina. Please applaud him. Your Majesty, sir. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, um, Distinguished Celebrant, Dr. Um, His Royal Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Madebebe Daukuru, his lovely wife, um, 
the number of people in this hall uh, is so daunting that uh, I'm sure you will not expect me to mention everybody, but the campaigner had done a very good work uh, already. I hope that uh, he will from time to time um, notice those who are just coming and uh, also greet them. Um, let me, uh, on behalf of uh, the celebrant, our friend, um, a skin of uh, the famous King Coco, King Frederick Coco, of the famous Akasa Raid of 1895. Um, congratulate him on all our, for our behalf for turning 80. Um, our celebrant is a friend you can depend on, and a man who is of deep contemplation. He is a man that you can take to places. He's a man who has achieved within 80 years of his life so much for his neighbor kingdom, for Nigeria, for the world. A man who had become the general secretary of OPEC had served the world. That is the statue of the man we are celebrating today. <laughs> King Dakuru, I met him about 19, uh, when I turned 70. And uh, since then, there had never been any birthday that I celebrated without him being present. He knows how to cultivate friendship. A very dependable man, dependable um, ally, who you can take to places and depend on him. A very erudite gentleman, a scholar of his own uh, caliber. He's written many books, and um, we are all very happy. As a matter of fact, I thought that um, he was so many years my junior. Uh, I did not realize that uh, as the friendship grew, that he was holding on to my cocktails to get him on to 80 years. So let me be officially, on behalf of all of us, up to generians, welcome him to the class of eight years. You are welcome, and uh, we hope you will carry this banner, and uh, we pray that God gives you the strength and continued um, energy to continue in doing what you're doing, serving your kingdom, serving your state, and serving Nigeria as a whole. So um, with the number of people we have here as chairman of this occasion, may I ask that please, we try to limit ourselves to time allotted us by the compare so that we can finish all that is listed here to be done today. I thank you, and God bless everybody. Could you please put your hands together for him? The Amayanobo of Upopo Kingdom and chairman of this unique celebration. Yes, indeed. The chairman of this unique celebration, whenever you hear Ja Ja of Opobo, we know we are speaking not just history, we are speaking the pedigree of who we are, our culture, our royalty, and the pageant of our very distinctive representations through history and times. So once again, we appreciate the chairman of this occasion, His Majesty King Dr. Danderson D. Douglas, 
the Amaya Nabo of Opobo for those remarks and for establishing again the fact that we're not just celebrating a traditional persona, but one who in the representation of that which is governmental, administrative, and for our nation, part of the very distinctive construct in the Committee of Nations is one whose industry and sector in terms of petroleum, oil, gas, and all of the referenced representations globally has brought that place of reference in that global commission. We welcome and celebrate His Majesty, the celebrant, as a king who today at 80 becomes a king whose celebration is a new expression, not just for Nembe Kingdom and Bayelsa State and South South Nigerians, but for every great Nigerian. The prayers here today are prayers that will impact every community and we continue to welcome the royal majesties who are present with us because they express the extension of all of this celebration. His royal majesty, the Obi of Owa kingdom, Ephesomo II is here. We welcome you. We also welcome his royal majesty, King Uche Irenuma II, Obi and paramount ruler of Abaro kingdom. His royal majesty, Etenyi, Dr. Etim Okon Edet, paramount ruler of Bakase and chairman, Cross River State Council of Traditional Rulers. We have with us also His Royal Highness Al Haji Abu Bakar Ahmed Yakubu II, the Eje Ampa. You are welcome, sir. His Royal Majesty Ambassador. Igwe L-O-C, Agobozo, O-O-N-C-F-R, Chairman Enugu State, Council of Traditional Rulers, and Southeast Council of Traditional Rulers. The Chairman, Abia State Council of Traditional Rulers, is here with us, His Royal Majesty, Eze Joseph Nwabeke, C-F-R. The Emir of Agungu, His Royal Highness, Alhaji Sumaila Mohammed Mohara Mira, C-O-N, his Royal Highness, King Ambassador Apollos Chu OFR, Egbere Mere Okori, the 10th of Eleme One E Nehia. You are welcome. We'd like to also acknowledge His Royal Majesty, AZEC, OKKCFR, I believe I did that earlier on, Chairman Imo State Council of Traditional Rulers. His Royal Highness, Alhaji Umaru Adamo Samila, O O N F I A M N, Gwangwari Ganye Adamawa State, His Royal Highness, Asieme Alabo, Engineer Dagogo. I shall return to that. And His Excellency Chief Rufus Nda George. Could you help me say that properly? As a labo engineer, Dagogo Lambert Brown, the Amadabo of Finima. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I would also, we continue like um, some of the recognitions we're doing now. Some people are in a bit of uh, a state of concern that there's been no omission. There's no omission. As the protocols come to us, we will announce and do the requisite recognitions. The representative of the Oba of Benin Kingdom, Obaware, the second chief Obasioge of Benin Kingdom, and chief Aweregene of Benin Kingdom. You are welcome. We'd like to appreciate also and recognize distinguished senator, chairman of Petroleum Upstream, Senator Etting Williams. You are welcome. Today, we are going to be launching two books of historic representation. Our chief launcher is none other than the president of the Azekal Group of Companies, Dr. Rani Azibalu, God bless, CFR. Please, let's put our hands together and appreciate him and every one of those distinctive, as well as distinguished representations 
for the book launch at the time of program presentation. From the Association of Niger Delta Monarchs of Nigeria and Mon, His Majesty King Captain F.N. Okurakbo Ode the Second J.P. Ph.D. Odiologbo of Okugwe Isoko Kingdom by Elsa Statement, Executive Chairman, General Coordinator, you are welcome. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses and Majesties, all of the pageant of the Royal Entourage here present, the CEOs of industry whose protocol we will be taking a little further on in the program. At this point, I would now like to invite for our first opening royal remark by Royal Father of the Day. His Eminence, Al Haji Doctor Mohammed Saad Abu Bakr the third Sultan of Sokoto. Please let's welcome our royal father up and even as he comes up to take this first goodwill. It's a royal goodwill and one that gives the kinship of kings their own voice and their own communication of do I call it good faith for the good citizens and communities of their kingdoms. I was Billahi Minishud An Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Sallallahu Alaihi Nabi al Karim. Our most distinguished colleague, friend, the celebrant, distinguished very prominent traditional leaders across the country here present, distinguished leaders of this great country in various capacities. I stand on all existing protocol. I greet you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, by the will of our creator, Almighty, we are here in this hall to felicitate with one of us, one of our friends, the one I call Mingi of the world. Not just for turning 80, but for being able to gather all of us under one roof as one big family from various destinations in this great country. Today is not a day for long speeches because the physical presence of all of us in this hall tells us who Mingi the Twelve is or had been and still is now. When I first came across this, I call him young man too, because at 80, he's still looking like a 60-year-old man. That's the blessing of Almighty God. We've come a long way. We've interacted. I went through the program of, event, of events, and I saw so many prominent Nigerians that sent messages of goodwill to Mingi. But those who have not sent any don't have to really bother because your physical presence here is the biggest contribution you can give to uplifting the unity of this country to the greatest heights. So if anybody thinks that traditional institution is not united, he should have been in this hall to see leaders from across this great country here in this very hall. So we're not here to celebrate such of. We're here to pronounce that yes, the unity of the institution is really real and cannot be thwarted by anybody from any political angle. We are not politicians, but we are the fathers of politicians. For some of us, 
we played a part in the two books we are going to launch today. One, that the short, short biography of Mingi. I was privileged to write the forward of that book. So you must get the book for you to read what I've said about you. So I'm not going to say it now, because if I do, you will not buy the book. So you must buy the book and buy for your friends too. I'm not launching the book yet, but I have the privilege of writing the forward. Because when Mingi approached me and requested me to write the forward, I do not hesitate because I know who he is. He's a man of many parts. He's a man we're so proud of as a traditional leader in this country and an honest and upright person who has gone around the world in his career and worked for Nigeria. So I wish you all the very best. And it's important too when we write our own story so that others will not go and write lies about us. We must write our own story. History is important. We must go through the histories of various countries, various communities, various individuals in this country. And so we thank Almighty for making us be part of history, part of this great gathering, and I wish Mingi 80 more years on earth. It's a wish. And I'm sure the royal lady will be very happy to hear that. We wish all of you the very best and safe trip back to your various destinations. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Another round of applause, please. Let's appreciate what his eminence and our royal father of the day has clearly articulated and communicated even with extending his felicitations and um, all of the congratulatory commendations due, is one of the most profound realizations of this present time. We need your stories. The story, the personal story of our history cannot be told for us. While you are yet living, you are legends who will tell us your stories. And this is critical for the social construct of a very present society, especially of our youth in your communities that are online and not in the palaces. They need to hear, they need to know, they need to be taught. Or maybe better still, I should say, we need to hear, we need to be told, we need to be taught. In the days of tales by moonlight, what cannot be told at moonlight can be packaged and retold by your scripts and authorship. So once again, thank you very much, Your Eminence, Dr. Mohammed Saad Abdul Abubakar III, Sultan of Sokoto, for that statement. Well, with the statements that said all of the preeminent representations, we continue with our recognitions here today. Chief Bright Eware Ereware Igbeta, Chairman Nembe Council of Chiefs and his executive, you are welcome. Onwao. We also like to acknowledge with us His Excellency, former Executive Governor River State, Chief Rufus Ada George. We also have with us former Honorable for Minister for Tourism, Rear Admiral O.P. Fingersey. We'd like to appreciate our former Permanent Secretary, Distinctive Son of South South by Elsa Soil, permanent, practice, permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Goodluck Igali. Your Excellency, we welcome and acknowledge all of your presence here today. His Royal Highness, Al Haji Nuhu Hamim Sanusi, Emir of Dutse Zaki. His Royal Highness, Obasule Idiaye, the Ima of Somorica coordinator, South-South Council of Traditional Rulers. You are welcome. His Royal Majesty, Osage Ikume I, JP. Onodje of Ewato Kingdom, 
Edo State. His Royal Majesty, Anthony Ehizoje Ahamere II, the Onoje of Ekboma, Edo State. His Royal Majesty, Eze Samuel Agunwa Ohiri, OB of Obi Orodo, Southeast Coordinator, NCTRN. His Royal Highness, King Aliu Dansi Oba Idansi Idanesi II. His Royal Majesty, Onoje of Ewo Edo State. Your Royal Majesty, you're welcome. The Lamido of Adamawa, Alhaji Mohammed Barkindo Aliu Mustafa, PhD, CFR, Chairman, Traditional Council of Chiefs Adamawa, represented by Alhaji Dr. Aminu Abdul Qadir, the Wali of Adamawa. We'd like to appreciate all of the Royal Majesties here present. And even as the protocols continue to bring the names forward, we would ask that for clarity in expression, there be clarity in the writ. Thank you. Mr. Austin Aruvo, the Vice Chairman, Platform Petroleum. Professor Adegoke, Director, Platform Petroleum. Moshe Amadi, John Anim, the MD CEO, Platform Petroleum, with his directors, Akindele Ojo, would like to appreciate all of the full force of Platform Petroleum here present. Akindele Ojo, and they are major partners of this celebration and hosting of this event today. Thank you very much. Mr. Akindele Ojo, we'd like to also appreciate Senator Bassi Henshaw, and all of these are brand platform petroleum partners in hosting today's celebration. His Royal Majesty, Perez Stanley Luke Akubene, the pair of Akubene, Maine, first vice chairman, Delta State Council of Traditional Rulers. We also have, I have already announced His Royal Majesty, OB Dr. Emmanuel Ephesomor, the OB of Owa, and His Royal Majesty, Emmanuel Sideso Abe One, Ovie of Uvivie. His Royal Majesty, Dr. Emmanuel E. Sideso Abe One, O O N J P, Ovie of Uwe Kingdom, Chairman Traditional Development Summit Council of Nigeria, and Captain John Roland Tonlaga, representing the Commission Chief Executive, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPAC. You are all welcome. And by the blessing and the prayer that I announced earlier in Yoruba language, when we say Ki Adek Pelori, that your crowns will live long on your royal heads. Ki Batak Pelese, that your royal slippers and sandals will stay long and become legendary and that the irukere, that which you hold in your hand will become old like a distinguished pedigree of an old man. May this continue to be the blessing of our royal fathers and their majesties here in the land. I would like to very properly celebrate, acknowledge and welcome our Queen Mother of the day, Her Royal Highness, Queen Gladys Dakaru, please help me properly celebrate our mother here today. <laughs> Mommy, I celebrate you, not just as a queen mother and matriarch, but one whose bridal appeal will remain long and strong in the eyes of daddy. At 80, it will continue to be stronger and more beautiful, and you will continue to shine as a matriarch for the women of Nembe Kingdom and your daughters that are coming behind you. We celebrate you, we honor you today, and we, today, as daughters of this nation, acknowledge that where there are mothers, we will do more than others. His Royal Majesty, 
Ah, uh-uh. women, say it well for me. Oh. Say it again. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. Amen. My goodness, that sounded like a prayer. Oh, wow. Please put your hands together for the women. Thank you. Thank you. This is why you don't keep a woman quiet. There is something she has to say. And when she releases it, it becomes the sound of the kingdom. My women, I greet you. Thank you very much. The representative of His Excellency, the governor of Bielsa State, is here. Please help me appreciate the Honorable David Alagua, the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture and Natural Resources by Elsa State here today, representing His Excellency, Executive Governor by Elsa State, the Deary. Please put your hands together for him. We welcome you. We appreciate you and all of the representation of His Excellency here today. His Royal Majesty, Barrister Anthony Obobo Ibuka I, Ofe of Ozoro Kingdom, Delta State. Well, there is no end to the recognitions and the protocols for our royal fathers and mothers here today, their entourage, and all of the chieftaincy representations. Before we go any further, I would like to invite a commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in comedy, of course. His name is Forever. And we are just going to give him this moment to do what only he can do, not me. He was just commenting that, oh my goodness, I don't envy what you do. And I said, I don't envy what you do. Because as a comedian, cracking jokes truly is not just an exercise. It is a God-given talent. As kings are appointed by God, comedians, believe me, are gifted by God. And I told forever, what I dare not do that you do. I cannot make a mistake and crack a joke with a name that I have been given to introduce as a master of ceremony. So if there's been any error, I don't consider it a joke. I consider myself teachable. I can be taught to call that name properly. But in the meantime, let's welcome some comedy and laughter because laughter is medicine even for kings and their kingdoms. Welcoming CFR, Comedian of the Federal Republic, forever! Our royal fathers and our excellencies, a very good morning to, uh, to everybody. Please, um, the title and that you added, the CFR, is not from the Federal Republic. It's an abbreviation for comedian. CFR means Comedian Federal Republic. So, some of you are wondering, where did he get it from? I got it at home, sir, so... I gave you to myself. And uh, please, a round of applause for our royal father who is celebrating his 80th birthday. Um, it's such a great honor for me because in primary school, when I was growing up, all we heard was Oni of Ife, um, King Jaja of Opobo, Emir of Kano, Sultan of Sokoto, as they were teaching us in social studies. Um, so to be standing in front of all of those people to be telling jokes today is a dream come true. So please, a round of applause for me for achieving my dream. And funny thing is that if I'd followed what I studied in school, I wouldn't be here in front of them. I studied mechanical engineering. Uh, by now, maybe I'll be repairing their cars, but see me today cracking jokes in front of them. That's why sometimes it's good to not just follow what you studied in school. Follow your dream. I thought I was the only one that changed course from mechanical engineering to being a comedian until I found out that my friend that studied civil engineering is currently a civil defense. I asked him, why is there a switch? At least there's civil on both sides. I said, well, you are not far from the truth. It was last year we realized that the best graduating student in my school, chemical engineering department, they make one for currently is a masquerade in Anambra. <laughs> I was driving past up week. I saw masquerade. I said, I know this body movement. I called the make one for masquerade answer because I said, I'm at work. I will call you back. Ah. I said, bro, are you the one in masquerade clothes? He said, my brother, is me. I said, what exactly do you do? He said, I work for the ghost. I said, wow. 
And um, it's beautiful. I saw one of my friends the other day. Ah, I said, forever, you're doing great. I appreciate you. I said, what about you? What do you do? He says, he's into marine engineering. I said, oh, nice. So where do you work? He said, the cash fish. <laughs> That's when I knew that marine engineering is marine engineering. You know, but seeing our fathers here, he's 80. And so if you calculate the age of Nigeria, Nigeria is our real father's younger brother. So please, a round of applause. <laughs> So when men like this speak, Nigeria needs to take advice. So at least advise us. You know, but the world is constantly changing. And um, one of the things I've noticed is the fact that some of the proverbs our parents used to tell us when we were growing up, in current day, they do no longer apply. For example, when we were growing up, we are told that what an elder will see sitting down. If a young man climbs a tree, he cannot see it. Uh, Maria, fathers, ladies and gentlemen, currently what an elder will see sitting down is online. A young man will Google it. They told us then that he who says his mother would not sleep, you too would not sleep. Currently, he who says his mother would not sleep, they will leave you with the nanny. Your mother will sleep. When I was growing up, they told us that if you see yourself eating in the dream, it means you are possessed. Ladies and gentlemen, I found out later in life that you are not possessed. If you sleep hungry, you will chop. Me that you are seeing here, I ate in my dream to the point I was owing in a restaurant. So whenever I sleep, I don't pass that street. Nothing you see in your dream happens in real life except one thing. Any day you dream you are urinating, wake up. Because in real life, you are urinating. And finally, before I go, um, I like this kind of bed this a lot because it's planned from scratch. There are no surprises. There are no surprises. And, um, but in Lagos, where I stay, a lot of, you see a lot of surprise beddies. One of the surprise beddies I can never forget it was a 50th surprise birthday organized for the husband by his wife. So the moment the man got into the hall, we opened the door, but he shouted, surprise! The man was crying, and the wife was shocked that her husband that she has been married to for 20 years is emotional, and she's just finding out. It was later we found out that the wife invited somebody that the man is owing money. <laughs> and it was the man that stood in front and shouted, Surprise! <laughs> The husband transferred 20 million afternoon. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the event. My name is Forever. Please, another round of applause for our comedian of the Federal Republic, Forever. Thank you very much for just giving us that critical infusion, not just of humor, but also of a very practical expression of personal story and where we come from and where we get our own national CFR representations from. I'd like to recognize His Royal Majesty, Dr. Justice, Francis Tabai, C-O-N-J-S-C, retired. The Ibenanamowe of Promo Kingdom, Delta State. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I'd like to recall this introduction properly. The South-South Monarchs Forum, His Royal Majesty, Alhaji Aliu K. Danesi, the upper in Danesi the second of I don't know J of South Ibe Kingdom from the Royal Palace of Sabo South Ibe Kingdom Etsako West Local Government Area Edo State. You are welcome. Thank you very much. We also have here with us the Shehu of Bama, His Royal Highness Dr. Umar Kiari Umar El Kane. Shehu of Bama. We have His Royal Highness Najib Usaini Adamo, the Emir of Kazauri. We have His Royal Majesty Oba Dr. Adejunwa Gabriel, the former chairman Ikiti State Council of Traditional Rulers. Barrister Frank Ayebai Kikpreye, the Secretary Nembe State Lawyers, and His Royal Highness Muazu Mohammed, the Emir of Kanam Plateau State. Just before I call up the next royal father for his own interventions, 
the only of you fair, I would like to get some resetting of this celebration here in this hall. And um, I have none other than a distinctive chief, the Alago, O-O-N, to do this on my behalf. And after this, all other protocols of salutary, celebrationary expressions of Nembe Kingdom established. Please. Save my soul. Thank you. Yanembe! 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 Kali opie! Opie kali! Wamiya imna wamiya! Wekitem na wekia! Amayana mindiana! Amayana mindiana! Amayana mindiana! Omoni mangi apele! Omoni mangi apele! Omoni mangi apele igirigi 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 noa o onua o nebeso onua o ejose onua o yoruba se onua o hausa se onua o keme keme wa nua jo bio nebe Oh, we are Oh, we are Oh, we are Korba, Wa be a be a mingi be. Amaya no be. Bomi Abuja. Kiri tanzaranoa. Bo. Oh, baka no imana. Maroti baka imina. I approach with sobriety, with humility. There's nothing like an original to do what an original does. Please help me put your hands together and appreciate. Aro! Nembe, sir! We'd like to say thank you very much, sir. And indeed, the energy of Nembe Kingdom, clearly, is an energy that right now was installed in this room. The energy of our palaces, of our kingdoms, is a DNA that runs in our rivers and in our rocks and will forever be a celebration wherever we go, wherever we are. I am honored and indeed, I am humbled. Thank you very much. We shall continue with recognitions. But right now, before I go into any more recognitions, I will invite to please come up for his remarks, the only of a fair, or Jaja, the second CFR, the only His Royal Majesty, I dare you, any time, Baba Tunde Ogunose, please help me welcome Kiade Pelori, Kibata Pelese. Your Majesty, the celebrant of today, the natural bridge builder, a traditional ruler by excellence with a touch of class and touch of professionalism.
I think we can do better for him. He deserves more, actually. He deserves more. And for a very simple reason, Your Majesty, King Edmund Dakuru, like his eminence said, he calls you Mingi of the world, but I think you should be Mingi of the universe. You are seated there majestically beside your amiable queen, the mother of the entire kingdom. Thank you for everything you do to support our very own King Edmund Dakuru. I want to thank God Almighty for your life on behalf of all of us. And I want you to please do me a favor. Just stand up. Look to your left. Look to your right. And look to the back of where you are majestically seated. Please, you are the celebrant of today. But from your left, you will see prominent royal fathers from the eastern part of this country, from the southern part of this country, from the northern part of this country, from the western part of this country, that you are truly a unifier. Please, the celebrant, can you just stand, stand up and wave to your other colleagues to show appreciation. They left all their kingdoms. They left all their kingdoms to give you this honor to celebrate you. If you look towards your back too, they're there. This is Nigeria. This is Nigeria. Please give the celebrant a resounding round of applause. Our politicians will go and they will come. We traditional rulers, we usually remain on the seat of our phobias. This is our country. Things like this, we should be doing it from time to time. They left their kingdoms to honor you because of who you are, because of what you stand for, because of what you do. Very selfless in your approach. Anytime we're having our traditional rulers meeting, the council meeting, you are always there. You are always contributing. You are always very, very supportive. On this note, this is the only way we can show appreciation to you. We are all here. We came by ourselves all the way to Abuja. This is a rallying point. The hall, like His Eminence said earlier on, also, I was actually whispering to him that it is just a must for me. I have a lot of events in my kingdom in Ife. I had to just sneak to come and spend two quality hours with the celebrant today. So I was telling his eminence that I will be running away very soon. He said, stay, why are you going? He likes to use that oppressing voice for me. Don't mind him. Are we not here to celebrate our brother? I said, no, I have been here too. My brother and I, we are good. Please, give him a, round in, a resounding round of applause. We are all very proud of you. We do not have any country. We do not have anywhere to go to in the world. This is our country. We traditional rulers should use initiatives like this, platforms like this, to send messages, even to generations yet unborn, that in unity we stand. Togetherness of our country is what you are seeing. Different class of culture, different class of tradition and different tri tribes all coming together for the betterment of our country. On this note, Your Majesty, whatever you are doing to deserve this, keep doing it. Whatever you are doing for this honor, keep doing it. 
whatever you are doing for this admiration, keep doing it. You have seen it all. You have actually led the petroleum sector of our their country. You have even represented us globally. You have actually been there before the final destiny call to be the traditional ruler. We are celebrating 80 years for you today. You came to me in the hotel yesterday night. I said, how did you make it? You said, it is our ancestors that is giving you the energy. That you will come and greet me in my kingdom when you are 160 years old. And that's my prayer. God will continue to give you long life, energy, vigor, and vitality. God bless you, and God bless all the works of your hand. Congratulations, and God bless our their country, Nigeria. Thank you very much. Once again, please let us appreciate and celebrate the honor of Ife. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, Your Majesty, Oni of Ife, Adieye, Eneton, Baba Tunde Ogunse, Ojaja, the second CFR. Sir, Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, your Majesties, Queen Royal, and all of the representation of Nembe Kingdom, sons and daughters of the soil of South South Bayelsa State, we continue to greet and celebrate you through the celebration of His Majesty King Dr. Edmund Madua Bebe Dakuru Mingi the Twelfth, and Mayanabo of Nembe Kingdom. Eighty years. Eight decades is not just a celebration of life. It's a legislation of councils of years, wisdom, that none resists or can gain say when it comes to community. As we just heard His Royal Highness, the Honour of IFSA, politicians, CEOs, we come, we go. But traditional rulers... Kings and kingdoms remain to become genealogy, legacy, hierarchy. Today, you're about to watch what is a montage on the life of our royal celebrant, his leaps of legacy, featuring not just him and his words, but indeed the sequels of his life through times, friendships, professional positions and other related lifetime commendations. I invite us all now to please settle back and engage the documentary Leaps of Legacy on His Majesty King Dr. Edmund Dakuru Mingi the Twelfth, Amman Yanabo of Nembe Kingdom. Thank you. Straightforward, a grassroots person. His Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Madwabebe Daukoro.
eminent geologist, astute bureaucrat, and first-class monarch of impeccable integrity, is the majestic fulfillment of royalty. A high breed of royals, King Dr. Dalko is one of the children. Among Nigerian traditional rulers, aimed at solving the challenges of national development. His Majesty, King Dr. Edmond Dalkoro, possesses exceptional gifts of intelligence, innovation, and organization. He is arguably a tactical genius and one of Nigeria's industry icons. The associated gas, the gas that comes out with the oil under production conditions, was simply a sort of wanted byproduct of oil activities. The policy makers, looking at the global energy mix, saw opportunity to convert that gas that was simply being flared into an export commodity. And from those thoughts, the first LNG scheme was born. An industry masterclass. His Majesty King Dr. Dalkoro is Chairman, NLNG Board of Directors, and President, Bonnie Gas Transport. Under his leadership, NLNG is committed to its expansion program with renewed vigor, especially with the start of construction of LNG Train 7. King Dr. Edmond Dalkoro had a shining career in Royal Dutch Shell Group from 1970 to 1992 and rose to the highest level of management as Divisional Manager and First Nigerian Executive Director, Exploration and Non-Traditional Business. In the sense that he eventually headed the Western Operations as a Divisional Manager, that meant in a lot of uh, trust was put on him by at least Shell world, Shell worldwide, and ultimately, ultimately, you know, Shell at the point had to sort of uh, second their staff to NNPC. It had to be seconded to NNPC.
An accomplished geologist, a disciplined young man at the time. Straightforward, a grassroots person. His Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Madwabebe Daukoru, eminent geologist, astute bureaucrat, and first class monarch of impeccable integrity, is the majestic fulfillment of royalty. A high breed of royals, King Dr. Dakoru is one of the champions of a new spirit of collective wisdom among Nigerian traditional rulers, aimed at solving the challenges of national development. His Majesty King Dr. Edmund Dakoru possesses exceptional gifts of intelligence, innovation, and organization. He is arguably a tactical genius and one of Nigeria's industry icons. The associated gas, the gas that comes out with the oil under production conditions, was simply being flared as an unwanted byproduct of oil activities. And the policymakers, looking at the global energy mix, saw opportunity to convert that gas that was simply being flared into an export commodity. And from those thoughts, the first LNG scheme was born. An industry masterclass. His Majesty King Dr. Daokoro is chairman, NLNG Board of Directors, and president, Bonnie Gas Transport. Under his leadership, NLNG is committed to its expansion program with renewed vigor, especially with the start of construction of LNG Train 7. King Dr. Edmond Dakoru had a shining career in Royal Dutch Shell Group from 1970 to 1992 and rose to the highest level of management as divisional manager and first Nigerian executive director, exploration and non-traditional business. In the sense that he eventually headed the Western operations as a divisional manager, that meant in the letter of a trust was put on him by at least Shell, world, shell Worldwide. And ultimately, ultimately, you know, Shell at a point had to sort of uh, second their staff to NNPC. It had to be seconded to NNPC. It all started in worry um, when we had a firm, one Ijoman, who is a geologist, who almost knows the subsurface. Uh, as he knows the creeks. King Edmond Dakoro left a litany of achievements in Shell, but two are remarkable. Coordination of Shell's acquisition of exploration licenses in deep water in which the giant Bonga discovery was made. Bonga remains the biggest discovery in Nigeria, on and offshore, with reserves in the billions bracket. Coordination of the construction of Nigeria's biggest gas supply plant at Utorogo, Delta State. 270 million cubic feet of gas from 1985 to 1988. This contribution is significant for the strategic gas supply source it represents for Nigeria, Bene Republic, Togo and Ghana. From the creeks of the Niger Delta, Dr. Daokoro successfully sailed Nigeria's policy ship on the ocean of oil and gas from 1992 to present. He was Group Managing Director of NNPC, 1992 to 1993, Presidential Advisor on Petroleum, Minister of State, 
Petroleum and First Energy Minister 2003 to 2007. His ability to adapt from private sector to public service despite the pitfalls was a game changer in the petroleum industry management and indigenous participation in Nigeria's oil sector. As President and Secretary General of OPEC from January to December 2006, Dr. Daokoro brought the best of his outstanding industry experience and competence to the global stage. OPEC itself does not subscribe to a view that uh, one can uh, simply sidestep oil overnight or, or within a short time span, or that uh, we could do without oil from certain parts of the world versus other parts of the world. I see oil as, as a resource for the entire human race, and that is the OPEC view. In July 2023, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, paid tribute to King Dr. Edmond Daokoro for his dedicated service to the organization. Born humble into Kolo and Okia royal lineage of Nembe in Bayelsa State on 13th October 1943, Edmond Daokoro's life is a study in resilience, tenacity, humility, and service. Having lost his father, Edmund, a produce inspector with USC when he was only 13 days old. His mother, Elfrida, a caring, kind, and marvelously industrious woman, ensured his education, while he, in latter years, ensured proper upbringing of his younger twin sisters. He was very supportive to my mother. Like, uh, he will carry us, play with us, to give a chance to sew, which was her major uh, livelihood. And that's where he got the support for his uh, educational career. He supported her mother from the time he was, was going to school. When he comes back, he assist, assisted her with cash, with uh, financial problems and the material things too. So when we grew up, he went to oversee. As he came back, he supported our mother in training us too. This is Otu Okroma Nembe, also known as Ologama, where King Edmond Dakoru was exposed to almost all facets of rural life, including farming, swimming, and fishing. Until 1949, he lived and grew up in this community in the care of his doting grandmother, Mrs. Bai Adigio, from where he returned to Nimbi City to start basic education at St. Luke's School, finishing at top of his peers. A neat, neat, brilliant boy in school. There were just two things we were doing, playing soccer, and imitating the elders in the, in the masquerades that they play. St. Luke's School, Nembe, was established by the Anglican Mission, which championed the educational development of Nembe and neighboring Ajok communities since its founding by Bishop Ajayi Crowder in 1870. From St. Luke's School, Nembe, Edmond Daokoro earned competitively contested scholarship award to Government College, Umwahia. He finished among the best at this college and proceeded to Imperial College London on Shell Scholarship to study geology. Bagging a PhD with his thesis, I judged as the best. He is a distinguished fellow of this prestigious college for lifetime achievement. is the palace of Mingidi Twelfth, Amainabo of Nimbe, a major oil producing community. Prior to OPEC quota restrictions, daily production from Nimbe Creek oil field was about 150,000 barrels per day. 
the Nembe Royal Throne is the oldest and preeminent traditional stool in Bielsa State, recognized since the colonial times. Mingi, after taking over the kingship of Nembe, established a dynasty, which is now called the Mingi dynasty. So today, you cannot be the king of Nembe without having the royal Mingi's blood. It is on this throne of eminence that King Dr. Daokoro sits today. He was crowned as Mingi the 12th, Amenabo of Nembe on 23rd February 2008 by Most Reverend Dr. Daniel C. Oko, currently president of Khan and General Overseer, Christ Holy Church International, of which His Majesty is a committed member. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. the greatest legacies of his reign remains the 260 million US dollars in Agua, Ogbia, Nembe Road, jointly sponsored by NDDC and the NNPC, Shell, Total Energies, Ajib Joint Venture, for the economic and social benefits of Nembe and other communities. Uh, they have been in Nembe for over 40, 50 years, whenever when oil started. I uh, have a lot of facilities in Nembe. And by that name, we travel to name it by water and air. The people come out, so it became part of the demand to really improve our relationship with communities. And name was selected for the signature project. When Right Reverend Omuku and uh, Losinja came into my office as a junior person then, they told me that Mingi, which is Dr. Edmond Dakoro, who was once our technical manager in Wari, has to drive to his hometown and that this road is for him. The road was an initiative of NDDC, but it was done in partnership with Shell Development Company and through the very able assistance and uh, this in, uh, of uh, King Dakoro. In fact, without him, I don't think would have been able to, anybody else would have been able to convince Shell to come on board to construct that road. His Majesty, Dr. Daokoro, is a kind, compassionate, and great family man. role of a father, an uncle, a brother, a sister, child, everything they can think of. I think he's a dedicated person. When I was growing up, I remember, I think it was in my teenage years, there was something he told me a couple of times, and that is, always finish whatever you start. Don't ever leave things hanging halfway. A wise and visionary leader, His Majesty King Dr. Edmond Daokoro, has come to the throne with great achievements in academics, the oil industry, and politics. His immediate and present challenge is to guide and lift Nimbe Kingdom to be a peace setter in the 21st century and beyond. I'm certain that you are more inspired. Please let's put our hands together in an applause that really celebrates not just the celebrant, but indeed the legacy. Oh, Your Royal Highness, Your Majesty King Dr. Edmund Dakuru, what an inspiration you are in the expression of all of the diverse representations 
And of course, the story of his very humble beginnings and by exposition, the loss of a father, bringing him to the place of a preeminent first son and scion for the family. Today, of course, the father royal of Nembe Kingdom. Congratulations. And while the documentary was presenting different features of his life and leaps of legacy, we did have expressions of different personalities. Foremost women like, um, I call her Auntie Georgina and Gary Waga. And I do know that here we have our very first female former head of service, Mommy Amma Peppel, the dame and the lady. Please let's put our hands together and appreciate them. <laughs> Celebrating, of course, our Prince Royal, Prince John Dakaru, and the rest of the siblings and the family, the community of Nembe Kingdom, and all of those projects, which through, of course, his own legacy coming from his position and enterprise leadership in the petroleum sector of the Federal Republic of Nigeria have given him that position, that space, that influence, and that relationship currency. To everyone who has made this story such a signification at 80, once again, we welcome, celebrate, and extend the congratulations of a celebrant of Jubilee at 80 to you. High Chief Dumo Lulu Briggs, Chairman Platform Petroleum Limited, is not here today, but he officially extends his regards. Oh, I was given a different instruction. Of, so, please, let's celebrate a father and elder statesman, High Chief Dumo Lulu Briggs. Please, a round of applause. <laughs> Celebrating you and the entire platform petroleum limited family that are here present. Well, we're going to end with the celebrations before we move into the um, public lecture. And I'll use the opportunity ahead of that to properly acknowledge with us Professor Magnus Bakol, who would be the lecturer of reference for this. Please, let's put our guest speakers, uh, let's put our hands together and appreciate to acknowledge him here today. Coordinating the panel discussion will be the moderator, Major General Chris Garba, retired, and all of the discussants, Professor Benjamin Ogala Ogaba, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, and Professor Benedicta Ebo. We would like to properly acknowledge them or their representations here today. Thank you for your patience. We shall be going through. Other recognitions here today, our chairman, FCT Council of Chiefs, and His Royal Highness, the Honor of Abaji, our paramount chieftain and king here in the FCT, Alhaji Dr. Adamu Baba Yunusa, MFR. We'd also like to acknowledge and appreciate the presence of, okay, I have it here, Amal Purabo. Amal Peppel, Mr. Andrei Savushkin, the Councillor, Embassy of the Russian Federation, His Excellency Anwar Sahid, the Head of Mission, Embassy of the Republic of Iraq, His Excellency the Ambassador of the Republic of Angola, His Majesty Oba Ewere, the second Oba of Benin, represented by very senior chiefs of his palace, I've already acknowledged the moderator of the public lecture, Major General Chris Abutu Garba, and His Royal Majesty Oba Abedin Adekombi Durusimi, the Osolu of Osolu Kingdom. We appreciate also the presence of Ambassador Ahmed Nuhu, Bamali, CFR, Emir of Zazao, Chairman Kaduna State Council of Chiefs. Francis Ibrahim Oboro, Dan Daraman Kabi Agungo, Chairman Inspection Services, Nigeria Limited, SGS. I know we have more recognitions, but at this point, I would like to call on Sir Dave to please do the interventions 
with me in the comparing of this ceremony while I put in order the rest of the critical recognitions ahead of the cutting of the cake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for her. So much recognition. Our very, very handsome traditional fathers. We cannot live here without recognizing them. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this, uh, at this time, we we'll request our celebrant to step out gallantly with his dear wife, the Queen. We we'll request Shell. LLNG. So please join him. Who we'll request the Sultan? Who we'll request the Oni? Who we'll request our chairman for today, King Judge of Popo, to join him as he cuts his anniversary cake? To moderate that session will be no less a person than a woman who has served this country. To moderate the cake cutting session will be a woman who served as permanent secretary to virtually all ministries in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a woman who served as clerk of the National Assembly, a woman who became head of service to the government of the Federation of Nigeria, a woman who became a minister of housing in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Amuporubo, Dr. Amal Ingala Purple, CFR MNI. She will conduct this unique, very unique, spectacular session of this event. His Majesty will rise with his wife, the Queen. The Sultan will join. The Oni will join. King Jaja will join. And Rep of Shell and LLNG would also join bringing all of us together under an umbrella. Could we please applaud them? Your Majesties. Okay. Your Majesties. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my duty is a very simple one, but I feel highly surprised to be called upon to do this. I would like to say for myself that I was at one time permanent secretary to His Majesty Mingi the 12th, the Amayabo of Nembe. Even though it was a very short period, but we worked together very well. All that he achieved would not have been possible but for the grace of God. And I want to seize the opportunity to thank everybody that has gathered in this hall today to celebrate him. I will ask him to please take the knife, put his hand on the knife. His, his wife, please, below him, then his own will be on top. Below. And then all the royal fathers, please try to... Connect with him by touching the person next to you. 
He achieved everything and he remains strong even at 80. You won't believe he's 80. The only said he, he looked like a 60 year old man and I will concur that. And I would like us to spell Jesus. I want to hear it from every part of this hall as we take the letters one by one. It is God that made him what he is and kept him this far. And we pray that he will have many, many more happy returns. So can I have a J? And an E? And an S? And a U? And a very loud final S. Thank you all very much. It's a celebration. There it's we celebration have it. Celebration time. Yes, 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 a celebration. You know, it doesn't make much sense. Certainly, certainly. I'll be long in. Anyone who takes a break. Am I an army dia? Am I an army dia? Am I an army dia? Oh, money, my dear Pala. Oh, money, my dear Pala. Oh, money, my dear Pala. You can't get it. You can't get it. You can't get it. ceremony everybody by God's grace will have an opportunity to have a photo shot with the celebrant but we want to run for time we will have an opportunity to have photographs that we will assure you we want to appreciate Captain John Roland Tolanga, representing the Commission Chief Executive, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. We recognize you, sir, and appreciate your presence. We appreciate the South South community in Abuja, led by Ambassador Dixon Omoroge. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Haven't cut our cake. Very quickly, we invite to propose a toast. He has partnered with us in planning this event, his group. And since he is here, we have the singular honor to invite to propose the toast. Opualabo, Barista, Dumo, Olu Benson Briggs, Inyokwari, the sixth of Calabari, chief and head of Uruari Briggs Group of Houses. Can we please applaud him? We should please allow him make his way to come and propose the toast.
Pues sí. Could the MD of Vice President of Platform Group please step out, please? Platform, platform, where's that platform group? The Vice President of Platform, please. Is that Mr. John Anim. Mr. John Annam, the MDCEO Platform Petroleum. Once again, Platform Petroleum is a partner, collaborator, chief celebrating partner for this event. So for Platform today, it is their day, their celebration. They've come here with a full force. Our Vice Chairman, Mr. Austin Navuru, Professor Degoke, Moshe Amechi, or Moshe Amechi, John Anim, Akindele Ojo, Distinguished Senator Bassi Henshaw, all of this strong, connected brand of personalities, but all today representing Platform Petroleum in all of the representation from chairman, vice chairman, to directors, to the MD CEO, everyone here present. Your Eminence, Your Royal Majesties, Your Highnesses, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular pleasure to be up here on behalf of our Chairman Chief Dumolulu Briggs and indeed on behalf of Platform Petroleum to propose the toast to the very good health, longevity, and excellent reign of His Majesty King Dr. Dakur. Really a pleasure, before I left Lagos this morning, I was looking at uh, the pamphlet with which uh, we were bidding for our marginal field back in 2001 with Dr. Dakuru's photograph, he was just 57. Young man, 57, and here we are 23 years later on his 80th birthday, looking even stronger than he was when he was 57. We give God all the glory. We pray very fervently for many, many more years of good health, favorable, useful reign in his kingdom, continuous contribution to the unity of this country, continuous endowment, and the grace of God on him now and in future, continuous relationship with leaders, spiritual and temporal of this country, as we have seen today. May we, those who can rise, I think your majesties will sit, May we, those who can rise, please rise and propose this toast to His Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Madwebebe Daokoro. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip.
Well, for the clinking of those glasses, it's a toast and a celebration of good health. And for our celebrant, His Majesty King Dr. Edmund Dakaru Mingi the 12th. And um, even as we shall be going straight into the rest of the formalities, the citations, the book review, and the lecture, we'll just take this last set of acknowledgments, recognitions of the Royal Highnesses here present. His Royal Highness Uhi Ovokene Alhaji Samaman Okatahi of the Ohi Okene's Palace, Ohi Okene, Kogi State, Nigeria. His Royal Majesty Alailua Oba Dr. Olufolari Olukayo de Ugusowo, Telade the fourth of the Alara of Ilara Kingdom. His Royal Majesty Oba Barrister Sunday Adeumi JP Okim Aloye one Onigogo of Igogo Kingdom. His Royal Majesty Oba Adeemi Afolabi Olujunri of Ijunri Kingdom. His Royal Majesty Oba Dr. David Babs Ogunshaki, the Elesu of Esu Kingdom. We'd like to also acknowledge free medical coverage of this event by Dr. Physique Health and Wellness Center and the stand is at the entrance by the left-hand side. The Nembe SE Congress ably led by Alabonengi James Eri Wario OON, Vice President and Barrister Allen Hope Jonah, the General Secretary. Thank you. Over to you, Sir Dave. Please, Platform Petroleum, partners to today's event, passionately had pleaded that they be given just 30 seconds to do a symbolic presentation. Would you please applaud them? Your Eminence, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is our honor Platform Petroleum Limited to, to give a token for our pioneer chairman, His Royal Majesty Dakuro. It's an honor to have you. And as our culture, because of his contribution towards making Platform what it is today, and the fact that he had clocked 80 years. We celebrate our shareholder. He's one of the shareholders of Platform Petroleum. And we recognize that today. And as a token for his attainment of 80 years, we want to give a small gift to him, which is a brand new Prado Jeep. It's just not just a, a mere mode of transportation. It's just to express the fact that he had accompanied us to grow from our small size to where we are today. And we want to wish him the best as he enters the next decade of his life that we will we'll be able to give something higher. And I say, His Royal Majesty, it's our pleasure to do so. The car is parked outside. And this is our symbol of expressing your, our gratitude. Thank you very much, His Eminence. Thank you, sir. The car is parked outside with the registering John number Mingi the 12. Please put your hands together for them. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit us to increase our speed. Celebrating 80 years of this wonderful man had caused him to ask that something be put down on paper as a memoir remembering him on earth. It's a book. We do not know the book yet, but someone has been asked to review the book. 
We will not bore you with so much details, but we know that he's a scholar of thought, a scholar of theory, a social scientist, currently a lecturer, a professor of political science in the Department of Political Science, Lagos State University. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to do a brief review, brief review, not the original review that he has done. We do not have that time. Please help me welcome Professor Sylvester Odion Akane. Please celebrate him. Celebrate him. Please put your hands together for him. A wonderful scholar. He will come and do a very brief review. Where's Prophet? Please celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. A very brief review. He's a prof, he understands what we mean by very brief, not the original review. Thank you. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Majesties, and Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my pleasure to give you an insight on the book we are about to launch here today. The Lips of, Leg of Legacy. Lips of Legacy. The American novelist Leon Eder talks about biography being a questionable honor, you know, to men who have not done something great. However, he notes that biography is appropriate for people who have contributed to public events. His Royal Majesty, King Edmund, Madhuabebe, Dokuru Miji the Twelfth is a man who has traversed many great times and therefore worthy of a biography. The biography is a long one, a 438 page biography with about 13 chapters. But I'll draw your attention to just some thematic areas. One, I will not talk about his roots and growth. The documentary we watch has talked briefly about that. But I'll talk about his contribution to the oil industry as well as politics of public office. You can't talk about the Nigerian oil industry today without talking about his royal majesty his leadership at the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the contributions he made there. Of course, one of them which became controversial was his bid to create a national strategic reserve in order to deal with the perennial fuel crisis in the country. Beyond that, we saw the role he played in stabilizing prices at the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. Not only that, in terms of exploration, we've mentioned about the Bonga, you know, oil feed, which is the biggest in the country, and contributes a huge amount of oil to national production. Now, what comes out from his role in the oil industry is a hint of why national development in this country is hobbled. Here was a man who had good policies. It 
to stabilize the oil industry and to move the nation forward. But of course, those good policies were, were hobbled by identity politics and self-interest. And that is the tragic thing about Nigeria. But we all know, and I need to underscore that, that as a graduate of Imperial College, he was well doctored and laid the, the intellectual foundation of what became his endeavor in the oil industry. Landmark seminar papers that formed the basis of much of the exploration, of course, in the Niger, in the Niger oil exploration in the Niger Delta today. Dakoru transition, of course, to the public space was the same way he grew and rose in the oil industry. He oscillated between oil exploration as well as operations. But of course, in government, he became the advisor to President Olusha Gwambasanjo. Beyond from there, he rose to become the Minister of State for Petroleum. And of course, the first minister of um, energy in the country. We have talked about his contribution. The Otorugu gas, gas, gas uh, establishment that feeds, of course, the Edwin Power Station was part of his contribution to oil development in Nigeria. Beyond that, I also want to say that even when he was briefly out of public life, he excelled at entrepreneurial task. And while doing that, he was preoccupied with issues of development. His Royal Majesty minded the Niger Delta Master Plan. With all the dynamics and politics of it, he did that. And so his contribution is immeasurable, and they are well documented. Documented in lips of legacy. But let me make one point. And that point is that the controversy in the oil industry, of course, he's been acquitted of it. He had his own taste of the brutality of the state when he had to be detained at Alagmo in Lagos and had to also take measures to beat the dragnet of security. You will not know what that takes when you are an innocent and you are being humbled. Not just humbled, of course, being disgraced by the state. Thank God he was exonerated. So the man we are celebrating today has contributed a lot. And in this short review, we will not be able to, you know, account for them. Except to make this point that the biographer did a very brilliant job. But he missed out what I call the phenomenological effect of narration. For example, the tribes of his majesties ought to have been given detailed analysis. And of course, he also did not provide us any foible of his majesty that would have provided a larger, I mean a contrast to the larger story that he told us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is the summary of Lips of Legacy. And I also gave it an alternate title, which is a guide to Nigerian politics. I thank you. Can we please applaud him, please? He has told us that there is a book. He gave it a title. Please permit me to invite the author to, in two minutes, say something. Let me invite Sir, Prince, Charles, Ogan. The past may be dead, but you cannot bury it. Your Excellencies, Chairman of Occasion, 
ladies and gentlemen. He was not to go to school at all. Not because of school fees, nor ill health, nor religion. Because his loving grandmother believed that school is a place of suffering. But today, he rose to the zenith of every mountain he climbed in life because of education. That is the story of King Dr. Edmund Dakuru. If you want to know more, please get a copy of the book. While working on this project, I learned a lot about the character of this legend. Sometime in June this year, I invited him to a public function in Port Harcourt. He read the invitation and smiling said, Charles, because of you, I will come. But on the eve of the book launch, His Majesty was still in Abuja. There was no hope he will come. In the New Testament, when God called Samuel, he answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. At about 9 p.m., I called me Jean's close associate and my friend, Chief Nawuru. I said, tell Mingi we appreciate why he's not coping. But through you, a chief of Nembe Kingdom, let the king speak, and what thy servant will hear. The next morning, here was Mingi in glory and majesty. For me, it was a big lesson, a lesson in humility and commitment. That is the kind of person he is, being there for people. As chairman of NMPC board, Mingi was there for his people when he approved the contracts for the construction of the Ogbea Nembe Road. Mingi was there for Nigerian people when at GMD of NMPC, he conceived the idea of the now popular NMPC mega stations. For company and country, Mingi was there to lead the team that discovered Bonga, Nigeria's biggest oil field on and offshore. Mingi was there for the people of the world when as president of, of OPEC, he was negotiating the stability of oil, crude oil, in order to lessen the pain of high prices at the pump. And even today, Mingi is there with his fellow traditional rulers, ensuring peace in this country. Please join me to celebrate this man of uncommon humanity. I wish to quickly thank His Majesty and his wonderful family for this opportunity to serve the great Nembe Kingdom in this form. I wish to thank His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, for accepting to write the foreword at short notice. Basil Omiyi for accepting to write the preface at short notice. And Professor Akaine, my brother, who I'm seeing for the first time today for doing the book review. I am grateful to His Excellency Chief Rufus Ada George, first, uh, former uh, Governor of River State, and Rear Admiral O.P. Fingesi for the unending support. And Chief Ayebaimi Nawurio, without him, this book will not come to reality. I thank all my friends and family from Port Harcourt, Abuja, and Lagos, especially my better life, Dame Dr. Gladys Charles Organ. <laughs> Above all, we return all glory to Almighty God, for we achieve nothing except we receive from him. Lips of legacy, 
is her mother's contribution to reconstruct the past and set our national history a step forward. I thank you all. Thank you very much, the author, Prince Charles. We will unveil the book that had been described. We will unveil the book that Charles has also laid before us. The celebrant and his dear wife, the representative of the governor of Bayelsa, the Esu Nupe, the Emir of Kanu, and the Amenabo of Tuan Brass. His Grace, the Khan President, and Captain, Captain John, representing the NURPC, NUPRC, Homa DPR, to join the celebrant and unveil this wonderful work. Then we will invite our chief launcher. Okay, we have also added that since he will be doing us the honor as chief launcher, Dr. Eronini, Erani, Erani Azbapo would also join them and we would invite him formally after the unveiling. The author and his wife, too, please join the celebrant. I repeat myself the celebrant and his wife, the Emir of Kanu, the Sunupe, the Amayabo of Twelve Brass, Captain John, the representative of the governor of Bayasa State, to please, and the author and the wife, the president of Khan, and of course, and of course, our chairman, the chairman for today's occasion. He called us to order. Thank you. Please, could the chairman, Bayesa State Council of Traditional Rulers, also join them? Yatai Gala, please. Could you please join them, please? Please. Yatai Gala, please. Okay. We would unveil as we pronounce. Please, I want everybody here to join me at the end of three. Pronounce the word unity. Are we ready? One, two, three. Unity. Can we applaud them, please? Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Haven't unveiled. Please pick up copy for display. Does display the book? Because we could just line across the stage. I want to invite. While they are standing there and photographers having a field day, our chief launcher, it's an unassuming man, a very distinguished personality. This man is known to have been the first to own a private hydro skimming oil refinery in Nigeria. He's of the Niger Delta extraction, especially via a state. He holds the title of commander of the Order of the Niger. This man is special. He is the president of Azikel Group. This man is the president of Azikel Group. Dr. Erwani Azipapu is a well-known man in Bayelsa. That man is a commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Please put your hands together for this very, very unassuming man, simple to the core, and a servant by excellence. Please put your hands together for him, for our chief launcher today. Oh, I'm not a CEO. Right, I corrected it. I corrected it. I yes, corrected it. No, I'm meeting you for the first time. And I would like to meet more of you. I'm just that one bunny boy that was told this morning, like you were told yesterday. So at least I was privileged to know that His Majesty has so much regards for you when he spoke to me yesterday. And meeting, meeting you. For the first time, indeed, I'm humbled. I'm sincerely humbled. And I pray that it builds friendship, it builds world. In Rotary, we say, will it bring goodwill and better friendship? I will allow you to make an introduction. I'm going to step aside when everybody is seated. Okay. Haven't reviewed and presented our book. Again, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to launch this book is no less a person, a man, like I said earlier on, the first, the first owner of an hydro skimming oil refinery in Nigeria. Kindly applaud him. Please help me appreciate Dr. Eruani Eruan, 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 Ezepapo, Commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President of the Group of Companies. Can you please applaud him again? Your Royal Majesties, Your Excellencies, friends 
and family of Israel Majesty that have come to celebrate with our dear father. To me, it's a very unique opportunity to stand before you to join friends, well-witchers, royal fathers, to celebrate a rare icon. An icon that at this moment is being admitted into the club of octagonarians. Your Eminence, Your Majesty, congratulations. Most significant today is the book that His Majesty has written to record what is most daring in life that he has traveled. And I'm going to be making the first launching of this book. The intention of this launching is to ensure that we're able to produce many, many copies of this book. We are able to distribute this book so the memories and the works of his majesty will remain in the archives of history and will be to the betterment of society. On behalf of myself, my family, my friends, and the Azika Refinery, I launched this book with a sum of 50 million. I didn't hear you clap. He did not say one million. He did not say five million. He did not say 10 million. He did not say 20 million. He did not say 30 million. He did not say 40 million. He did not say 45 million. This man launched this book with 50 million naira. Now, celebrating a legend. It would be very unfair to bring out a list and start calling names. No. To start with, we have our marketers up here, those who will be selling the book. You could meet them privately if you do not want to make a pronouncement. But the floor is open. Open for the next 10 minutes. The DJ will give us soft music. We would appreciate it coming from within, not calling of names. That's the strategy we're using here today. If you love His Majesty King Takuru, you would get up, you would come and write your name in gold that you were one of those that sponsored his autobiography. We will not call you by name, but we will believe that you would appreciate King Edmund enough to come out here and be counted. While the soft music is going for the next 10 minutes, our guest speakers should get ready to get ready so that we shall run at a jet speed. But for the next 10 minutes at soft music, it's either you're talking to our ladies or you're taking the microphone yourself. And let's celebrate this man. Let's celebrate this Nembe man. Not many Nigerians are fellow of the Imperial College. It is not easy to have gone to the Imperial College at the time he went. So it would be nice to write your name as partnering with him on the lip. Our marketers are here. After 10 minutes, we will continue. But if you need to be acknowledged,
the royal majesties, excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Idere Gogu Ogan. It's practically impossible for the celebrant to name his children and not call my name. Uh, yesterday evening, he called me and asked where I was. I told him, Your Royal Majesty, I will be in Abuja and I will grace this occasion. You have done very well. I don't need to uh, restate what has been said about your legacy and your footprint. Let me support my good friend, Dr. Rwani, by donating 10 million to this book. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, while we await you, there is one man in this hall that if we do not acknowledge him, history would not be kind to us nor be fair. This man, a professor emeritus of history, this man had written books that changed the lives of Niger Deltans. This man had written books that placed city-states and kingdoms in the Niger Delta on the front burner. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to specially recognize this 90-year-old man, also a chief of Nembe, but Professor Emeritus E.J. Alagua. Can he please stand so that everybody can see him where he is? A man born in 1933 and he's here, healed and healthy. And he is the publisher of this book. Please put your hands together for him. You know you have the author and you have the publisher. Prof, Nigeria celebrates you. Somebody says he doesn't want to be called, but he will pick up this book for a million naira. Please applaud the person. Please feel free. Please feel free. Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, and the very distinguished guests here present. My name is Dr. Ken Robinson. I'm the National Publicity Secretary of Pan Niger Delta Forum. I see some of our leaders here. Ambassador Doc, God knows Igali is here. I guess Nito Basi Ewa Insho is here. Pan Niger Delta Forum is an organization for the Niger Delta people led by Chief Dr. E.K. Clark, OFROCON. It will be out of place for us not to make our own contribution, no matter how little, to one of our fathers and great leaders and royal fathers of the Niger Delta region. On behalf of the leadership of PANDEF, um, we are mindful of the millions that have been mentioned, and we hope that the, million, the millions will continue to come in in support of our father and our leader, but PANDEF will take two copies of this book for 200,000 naira. Thank you very much. We appreciate the presence of um, His Royal Highness, Dr. H. N. Yaya, the Emir of Songa, Kwara State. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Please, ladies and gentlemen, may I now request 
of the representative of His Excellency Senator Doye Diri, the Executive Governor of Bayasa State, Honorable David Alagua, to now speak for the Governor of Bayasa State. Could you please applaud him, please? Your Excellency, your Excellency is here present. Your Majesty is here present. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand here before you representing His Excellency, Senator Doye Diri, the Governor of Bayelsa State. He is unavoidably absent. He had wished to be here, but at the last minute, he has sent me to represent him because I was actually in Abuja. He was, something came up and he couldn't make it. He takes this event very seriously. Of course, he was with the king a while back, and I'm sure that they had spoken together about the event. However, today is a day of the celebration, and he has asked me to personally represent him, like I said, but state categorically at this point that there would not be a public announcement, but that he will definitely see his eminence. I am sure that he will, because this weekend also, the party continues in Nimbi, so I'm sure we'll all be there. So, <clears throat> from His Excellency to His Majesty, I'm sure they will meet later. Thank you very much. I am, however, also a Nimbi man, and very, very proud to be here today. When you look at the names of His Majesty, His Eminence. They refer to him as Mingi 12, suggesting that he is perhaps the 12th in the line of kings, which is correct to an extent and also understated. He is actually the 12th in a, line, in a lineage that in Nembe we have taken from Mingi. But the lineage goes far back beyond Mingi. Mingi lived about 300 years ago. And his, we, we're, we're taking our lineage from Mingi, but indeed the, 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 the lineage was there. The monarchy was there before then, going back almost a thousand years. So who we are seeing here is representing various dynasties and today, I think around the world, would count as one of the most prominent and longest kings and lineages in the world. I am very, very proud indeed to be part of this ancient kingdom. The Amainaba of Nembe, as it's called, a treaty king, which means that he was recognized by the Queen of England at the time. As it states categorically, the Mingi, the king of the brass people, the Amainaba of Nembe, today a first class monarch. As we say in Nimbe, owner of the land and the sea, he ruled over all the territory around him. And we call him Igrigi, the great. I am very proud indeed, and that's why I'm saying all this. I stand tall as a Nimbe man. And as humble as I am in my small job, I would make my own small donation of one million naira. Thank you very much. Please thank you very much, the Executive Governor of Bayasa State, for the kind words. We hope and pray that you will join the celebration on Sunday at St. Luke's Cathedral, Nembe, and that which will follow afterwards. Uh, all royalties duly recognized. My name is uh, Engineer Zembio Yakmagwea. 
the National Publicity Secretary, uh, the President of INC, Chief Professor Benjamin Ogelo Kaba, has directed me to take three books on behalf of INC for 300,000. Ah, is on. His Excellencies and His Majesties, permit me to speak in a language that I'm much more familiar with. My name is Frank Ibekipre, the Secretary of Nimbese Lawyers Forum. His Majesty, no, be over the one and give me your me up a guy, me do I baby up a guy into walk home work with me baby couple pagate a number of a new guy baby one in our mommy what will me do to me what we know launching but lawyers on go away me 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 ba what chamber bureau you me you what we have got to do about back back more I know my name, Adiri, Wa, Ibogieke, or Lonchio, and I am going to walk back to the room, and I am going to walk back to His Majesty, Nwao, Nebebe, Obasima, Nwao, please forgive me for speaking in a language that I can boldly speak on. Thank you, sir. Your Royal Majesty and Celebrant, happy birthday, sir. Congratulations to all the Royal Majesties and Excellencies and special dignitaries here present. I stand on existing protocol. Uh, my name is Roti Mifamo Roti. I'm the Chief Corporate Services Officer for First Independent Power Limited. I'm also a subsidiary of Sahara Group. Uh, I've been asked to launched the book, uh, three copies of the book for one million naira. We do respect and humility to all our special guests. I want to inform you that I'm handy here with one million naira from a son, a dedicated and committed son from the Nimbe Kingdom, who do not want to announce his name. One million naira cash here with me. Thank you. We are about closing that window, that curtain. We are aware that people are buying. We thank them. We appreciate them. But if you still want to be seen, I'm also aware that the Nembe Council of Chiefs would like to make a statement. So please applaud them. You can see them coming. Your Majesties, kings from various kingdoms here present, we are standing here on behalf of the Nembe Chiefs Council. His Royal Majesty King Edmund the Kuru, the Amayanab of Nembe, is a special gift from God to the people of Nembe, and in whom we are well pleased. We want to support the book with the sum of one million naira only. Thank you very much. Thank you.
we will close this curtain and open another curtain because we must run. We've come to that point where we must allow the intellectuals tell us a few things in line with the vision of the celebrants. Your Excellency, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, so much would come out of this because it is the wish, it is the desire, it is the prayer of our celebrant that at the end of today, Nimbe will never be the same again. Payasa will never be the same again. He has managed to muster this level of unity from his brothers across the country. Very unique. Today could also change the scope of Nigeria. Haven't said that much. Permit me at this time to now invite our guest speaker. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. My name is Chief Dr. Franklin Igbodo. I am the technical advisor to King Dr. Edmund Daukoru at the board of the LNG. And having mentored me to this level and having gone through the book, I can't just stand and see others launch without me partaking. To say thank you for the wealth of wisdom he has impacted on me. I therefore launched this book with the amount of 500,000 Naira. <laughs> Mingi, Noah. Thank you very much. Let me now invite this man, Your Majesty, let me stand on the already established protocols here. The Delta stage contingent here, led by His Royal Majesty. Major General Felix Mujakboro retired. And of course, her leader is Royal Majesty, the Obi of our kingdom. And every one of us here present, we are also launching this book with a sum of one million naira. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, those of us who would like to have a bite, something to bite, not food really, but fight. At the side, to my right, we could find a table where you could pick a thing or two to bite, please. Your Majesties and uh, His Royal Highnesses and uh, all the dignitaries here with us. Uh, we are here today because of our dynamic friend, Your Majesty Dakura. Yes, it's God making that made us to be here today. And it is God making everything we've done today looks possible. And it is God's power that made him to cross all these positions that he has made. Glory be to God. He never do it by his own strength. But that is a destiny 
destiny that God made him to fulfill. And he came really and he saw and he conquered it. God bless you. You have to get more years more so that we shall be celebrating this study. I'm using this opportunity on behalf of my family and the most traditional rulers. You say, I'm grazing this occasion with the one million. Thank you very much. Yes, we'll post the account number now, please. Forgive us. Uh, to His uh, Majesty and uh, uh, Royal Highnesses, uh, my name is Amos from Bogu Local Government of uh, Niger State. I uh, had the opportunity to have met. Uh, his Royal Majesty, and uh, he did discuss with me, telling me about uh, our late Emir of Borgu, and uh, each time things are done this way, I want to see how much I could make the name to keep the flag flying. Though the Emir is no more, but he has left his children behind. Wherever things like this are happening, and I happen to be there, I, I registered the fact that he was a father, and if things like this were taking place, he would have been there, but fine. The, the, whoever, the person God has ordained, yeah, I was thinking he might be here, but he's not. Uh, by his grace, uh, I sincerely appreciate his uh, royal majesty. Uh, and support the book launch to his honor. Uh, I would like to pick uh, maybe, let me do it this way, one for his uh, royal highness of uh, the late Emir, and uh, one for uh, I personally, and uh, the third one, I want to give a copy to uh, royal highness, the Sultan of Sokoto, he might not know me, but we've been to him. And uh, the Emir of Kano too, the four for 250,000 each, making one million. His High Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, the Royal, uh, Royal Majesties, Royal Highness is here present. My name is Alaji Kasim Mayewa, Director of National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. I have been mandated by his, his uh, eminence to inform the, this August gathering that apart from his personal contribution uh, to the formation of this book, because he was the fellow that wrote the forward to the book. He asked me to inform the organizers of this, of this event that northern traditional rulers have decided to launch the books for the sum of three million naira. Thank you very much, the Sultan, and all northern traditional rulers for this show of love. Thank you very much. We, we had thought that we would have come down with a microphone, but having sent somebody to Ross, it will not be necessary to bring the microphone to you. And, but there are still some traditional rulers who we think that the microphone should come to them and they shouldn't come to the microphone if they have a message they may not say a word in terms of figure, but greeting us may mean that our people will see them later. And if you forgive us, we would want to take the microphone to some traditional rulers whom we feel that have come to be part of this celebration in full. 
but cannot come up here. So we'll come to them. The microphone will come to them, excluding the Sultan and the Northern traditional rulers. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, come on. Yes, sir, wait, he's coming. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, His Royal Highnesses, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, here, I am standing here on behalf of Christ Holy Church International, Rumumasi branch, the local church where His Royal Majesty King Dr. Edmund Dakoru and his family used to worship every time they come to Porakot. They have sent us with a message of congratulations on your 80th uh, birthday. God Almighty will keep you long. He will keep you healthy for more celebrations. And uh, we are given a token of 300,000 Naira to support this book launch. We are very happy to identify with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Just with you. We're about closing this window. We're about closing this window for the next two minutes. Two minutes, and we'll draw this curtain and open another curtain. Two minutes. We sincerely want to thank all who have part, who have partook in this, and we pray that those who are still considering will do the needful. It's time to invite our guest speaker. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this man is a visiting professor of economics at the University of Dallas. This man had served as chief economic advisor to a former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This man is a prolific speaker a motivational speaker, a life coach. This man is a business developmental strategist. This man believes in economic growth. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to speak to us this afternoon. Professor Magnus Lekra Bako. Could you please applaud him, our guest speaker for today? We will plead with him because we know he knows what to do so that we will not get bored, tired, exhausted. Please applaud him as he comes off stage, please. Professor Magnus Paco, please.
Your Royal Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Madwebebe Daukuru, Mingi the Twelfth, Amayanabo of Nembe Kingdom, and our Queen Mother, here, Queen Gladys Daukuru, Mother of the Nembe Kingdom, the Chairman of the Occasion, King Jaja of Opobo, his Grace, the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, the Oni of Ife, and my other fathers, many, many fathers here, some very personal, very close to me. I greet you all, Your Majesties. You are the custodians of the history of economic thought for Nigeria and Africa. You are the custodians of the glory of Africa and its political economy. But now I thank God Almighty, who has allowed me to be able to walk up to this wooden podium because I have been graciously invited to speak to you on this wonderful occasion of the celebration of a great man a giant in personality, a giant in intellect, a giant in goodness, a great Nigerian, a great African, and indeed a great global figure. He is a mentor to me. He is my king as well. He was a very senior colleague to me in government many years back, and so I'm highly honored that uh, he has chosen to invite me to say a word to you today. Now, let me tell a couple of stories. On September 20th, 1958, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was speaking, and actually he was signing books at a book signing ceremony. And when this lady came up, one Isola Curry, a 42-year-old woman, walked up and stabbed him in the chest with a letter opener. Now, they rushed him to the hospital. And when they got to the hospital, the doctor told Dr. King that I'm glad that you are here. And they brought you here quickly because the blade had come so close to your aorta. The aorta, as the medical doctors here know, is the biggest, is the largest artery in the body. And the blade came inches from the aorta. And the doctor said, if you had sneezed, you would have died. If he had as much as sneezed, Martin Luther King Jr. would have died. And so, uh, not long after that, he was speaking somewhere, Martin Luther King Jr. was, and he told the story of how when he was in the hospital, a little girl, a little white girl, about 12 years old, wrote a letter to him and said, Dr. King, I heard the story of what happened to you, of the tragedy that befell you, of how somebody stabbed you, and how if you had sneezed, you would have died. And so the little girl said, I'm happy you did not sneeze. And so now, as we remember, in August of 2010, the palace of His Royal Majesty, King Dr. Edmund Dacru, was attacked by armed youths in speedboats that tied his guards and stole traditional regalia and destroyed the palace. And I'm happy that the king was absent on that day. Because if he had not been absent on that day, he would not be present today to do the things that he's doing in Nembe Kingdom. If he had not been absent on that day from that destruction, he would not have been able to build the roads that he built in Nembe Kingdom. If he had not been absent on that day, 
he would not have been able to do the great things that he's doing throughout Nigeria, bringing people together, as we see here today. And so I am highly honored that I'm able to talk about that. Because as in the spirit of what happened to Dr. King, if Dr. King has sneezed, then many of the civil rights achievements that have been achieved in the United States might have been delayed or might never have happened. Perhaps the African, I call him African, Barack Obama, might not have been president of the United States. And so we're happy that he did not sneeze. And we are happy that the king was absent from his palace on that day. And he's able to do the great things that he does today. Not long back, the great Italian Enzo Maioca. Enzo Maioca was diving near Syracuse. And he had his daughters Rosanna and Patricia in the boat with him. As he descended, he felt something lightly hit him in the back. And he turned and saw a male dolphin. Then he realized that the dolphin did not want to play. The animal dived forward and he followed. When he got down about 40 feet, they saw another animal that had been trapped uh, in an abandoned fishing trap. They released that animal and when they came to the surface, it was a female animal. And the dolphin gave birth. After the dolphin gave birth, the papa dolphin made a circle, turned round, and kissed Enzo Mayoka in the cheeks. You what? So the they um, he he came and congratulated. Enzo thanked him. Now, I tell these two stories because oftentimes I've found that we get to monotony. We do the same things over and over and over again and expect a different result. So, I know, and I got to say this. Now, first of all, this I have, I have, I have various versions of this, this document. If you want a short one of 10 minutes, I mean of 10 pages, we have it. If you want the one of 50 pages, we also have it. But do not be afraid. I will not give the one of 50 pages here today. I will give the one that is very short. We'll be done in just a few minutes. But I just want to mention that what we are here talking about is rural economic development. We talk about rural electrification. But you can never get rural electrification without economic development. You can never. It will never happen. It does not happen anywhere in the world where you have good electricity supply, energy supply, sufficient energy supply in a sea of poverty. It does not happen. If there's one message that I want to leave behind is to say that you will never have electricity in Nigeria so long as we have poverty. First and foremost, poor people cannot pay for electricity. And if you cannot pay for something, people will not supply it. So we got to find a way to help people supply it. And the way is going to be very creative and innovative. Now, there is no time, but perhaps there will be time some other occasion for us to really talk about what has to happen. But I will abandon my speech just so that I can finish this in time. I leave my prepared remarks to the side. And I just want to say a couple of things. And, and that is that it is all about human capital development. It is what, what the king has achieved. The, if you notice, look at the thing that brought him to the great heights that he has come. Your Royal Majesty, I just came from Calgary, Canada. I came only and expressly for this purpose. And if it is for one minute that I speak and I come to visit with you, I'm extremely happy. You have been good to me. You have been a mentor to me. And I congratulate you. But in Canada, I found out that you have a key to the city of Calgary. And, and it's an amazing thing. It is not easy. That great city of Calgary, our royal majesty has a key to it. He is an incredible international figure. 
the reason he is able to do that, the reason he's able to bring all these people here together is because of his very high, very high level of human capital. That's why he's able to do it. You cannot do much without human capital. We have to institutionalize this. And I would like to have the occasion, if it is possible, your eminence, the Sultan, to come and see you. I met you before when I was working at NAPEP, and I came to see you. Your hospitality was wonderful, and you taught us a lot of things on that day. And all your majesties here, I would like to come and see my own majesty, the chairman of the occasion. I would like to come and see you and plead that we enthrone, that we make it a convention to pay particular attention to human capital development throughout the country. If we do not do this, we will not succeed. You can write it down. There is no country in the world that has succeeded, become self-sufficient in whatever, been able to provide energy that did not have a very high stock of human capital. So if, if we're here to talk about energy in the rural areas of the Niger Delta, where we only have about 8% access to electricity. I have it in the document. The Niger Delta is mostly rural, 70% rural. And we have only 8% rural electrification there. If you go to Kenya, they have nearly 60%. Egypt has 100%. Algeria, 100%. Tunisia, 100%. Even Ghana has 67% access to electricity in the rural areas. In Nigeria, the whole country is 26%. Like I said, I've just left the prepared remarks. I can go into it as technical as you want it, but I see that today is a different kind of day. So I just want to say just a couple of things. But the point of the matter is that it is not just to say that we want electricity, it's to say how do we get electricity? And I'm saying it boldly and strongly that you will not have it unless you do what is required to do. All you have to do is see the countries that have done it and say, how have they done it? You, there is no other way. There is no other way. The only way is that we have a great stock of human capital. So I'm going to end this conversation um, in just two, three minutes. Unless somebody insists that I should go on for another hour. I don't think anybody would do that. Okay. But anyway, but I want to say this. When... Because so that when you go back and look at it, you can think properly. When I say human capital development, I want to leave this with everybody. I am not talking about just going to school. I am not talking about classroom blocks. I am not talking about those kinds of things. I am talking about intentionality and the criticality of certain pillars. So these are the two things I just want to mention intentionality. In other words, when we say human capital, it has to be intention. We have to be purposeful. We have to know what we want. If you send somebody to school, I was talking to a former governor the other day, we flew in together, and I said, Your Excellency, when you send people overseas to go to school, did they ever come back? When you paid their way in scholarship, did you ever see them come back and work in your state? He could not remember any of them that came back to work. In fact, he prepared them so that they can jump up to Canada and to the United States. Because what we do is that when we prepare people, we do not have an intention. We don't have an express intention. And we do not calculate a, a return on investment. We just send people to school. We don't, what do we expect? You have to expect certain things. So if you buy a car, you will know, do I want to use it for a taxi? Or do I want to drive it in my house? You must have an intention. If you go buy a caterpillar, an earth mover, there is an intention for it. So similarly, if you send people to school, you have to know that I want this person to do this when they finish school. The whole country must do it. The president must take this, and I plead with you traditional rulers. You are the embodiment of who we are as a people, that you pay attention to this idea of human capital development. It must be institutionalized throughout the country. And so on that note, I plead that you, I wanted to say, those who want to question, if you want to impeach my inquiry about the importance of human capital development, I want you to 
do it carefully. Do it retrospectively. But please be sure that you pay attention to the fact that rural electrification will not happen. And then lastly, 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 the Niger Delta is the known backbone for the development of Nigeria. You cannot, the nation, and I say this again, the nation cannot be successful today as it is, without, cannot be successful without the development of the Niger Delta. And I'm not saying that for any sentimental reason. That is just a fact. That's where the major resources for Nigeria's development today are. And so the country must be intentional about how to have energy security, about how to have human capital development, about how to have industrialization in that area so that there will be peace. For one reason, the lunch hour will not be long enough for somebody to go and burn down a gas installation and go back to work. The lunch hour would not be long enough for somebody to kidnap an oil worker and go back to work. The Niger Delta has to be developed for the nation to be developed. I thank you all so very much. Can we please applaud him? Thank you very much, Professor. Paco, please, we flashed the account earlier on, but um, we'll flash it again. Z Energy Limited, the bank is Zenet Bank, and if you're writing, that's the account number 12-28-41-11-13. I repeat, 12-28-41-11-13. Thank you very much. If you have observed, we've not followed the program the way you have it on your hands, in your hands. Forgive us. Uh, we are celebrating. And because we are celebrating, we want to take the high points at the proper time. But before I do the next thing, which is the discussion, something unique would happen. But before I invite the person to do that unique thing, I hear His Excellency, the former Governor of Bayasa, Chief Timipri Silva, has a message for us. My Royal Fathers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand on existing protocols. I Chief Dr. Franklin Igbodo, technical advisor to the chairman in LNG, has been mandated by His Excellency Timmy Pre, Marlin Silva, CON, that he is launching the book with a sum of 50 million naira. And also, a very good friend of His Royal Majesty. Uh, we talked about him uh, sometimes when we were in the office. And also to let him know, His Royal Highness Chief. Or oh, let me take that back, please. His Royal Highness Apollos Chu, the paramount ruler of One, has announced his launching to the tune of one million naira. His representative has collected the books. Your Majesty, he extends his regards. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, Your Majesties, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, not to do a vote of thanks, no. But you cannot gather in this number. You cannot celebrate him like this and he cannot come out here. Permit me and give me the strength to now respectfully invite His Majesty King Dr. Edmond Dakoru Mingi the Twelfth, Fellow of the Imperial College, 
the amenable of Nimbi and all brass people. Thank you. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Captains of Industry, my own people from home territory, people from all walks of life. This hall is full and it is the face of Nigeria. For reasons of good management of time, I've decided to speak a little bit out of tune with the program, but before the hall empties, I felt I owe all of you a duty to at least express my deep feelings of gratitude to you for finding the time to come and spend a good part of a whole day with us here. I need to mention a few specific names. Everybody, of course, is important. But there are some who, by God's calling and by who they are, and by the positions they hold, move a lot of things. And when they move, a lot else moves with them. I have to first thank the chairman of this occasion, my friend, fellow Treaty King, King Jaja of Opobo, and collaborator in the South South Monarchs Forum himself, myself, and a few others got together and kicked it, kicked it off in 2009. He is here to chairman this occasion. Jackie, you are most welcome. His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, is chairman of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, and he has a co-chairman in the person of the Oni of Ife. His Eminence is the most wonderful person to know. Time will come when he will celebrate his own 80th and will be there to sing the full song. Now I'm only giving you the first line to say he's the most wonderful person to know. Always accommodating, reaching out to everybody, great uniter. If you go to visit him for an hour, you better budget for two or three. He would not let you go. He is that kind of person and he comes naturally. It is not something affected. We always know the difference between the genuine and the affected one. You are most welcome, Your Eminence. I'm highly honored. And just like a blend of two, the only is a mixer, great mixer, great listener, very practical, no fancy about him. He says it as it is in terms that everybody can understand and a go-getter. And God has been infinitely kind to give us these two leaders of a titled and famed institution from ancient times for them to be the leaders at this particular time. And I can say more, no more in my appreciation that we are committed to work with them for the betterment of our country, Nigeria, and also for the upliftment of the institution itself that shoulders so much burden when it comes to national issues. I have uh, three very general points and then two smaller ones to make. I, of course, wrote a written response, but in the circumstances it is not necessary and there is no time anyway, so I will simply speak from the heart because we are talking of matters of the heart. And it is very, very easy at times like this for celebrants to even choke on their words. I will try. 
Uh, one of the, uh, the points I want to take first is the huge turnout. This event, this event should have come earlier in terms of the diversity and variety of people that are gathered here. This could have come earlier. Uh, I say so because 10 years into my ascendancy to the throne of my ancestors, we felt like doing a 10-year anniversary. I ascended the throne in 2008. 10 years made it 2018. But I had concerns. As an elder, and knowing how difficult simple travel has become in this country, travel that was in former times not too long ago, was something people undertook for pleasure, not necessarily for a purpose. And some of you will still remember the name of uh, Elijah in the Benizao base uh, records, uh, Ajala. Ajala liked to travel all over the world for the joy of travel. He would just pick up his shoulder bag and off he went. That was how it used to be in, the, in, these day, in those days. But now first you have to have the funds and if you have a good car, the roads have to be also good for you to enjoy your, enjoy your car. And then of course, purchasing power and all of that. When you get to where you are going, you have to stay overnight, you have to pay. All of that is gradually becoming a bygone dream. And so considering all of that, even then it was not as bad as it is now. I said, okay, let, let's put it off a bit. We can always do it later. And then came uh, from 2018, we came to 2020. 2020 was... Uh, I believe uh, two years on from 2018. And then I was 12 years, 12 years on the throne. We said, okay, why not 12 years? Because I am Mingi the 12th, and 12 and 12 would rhyme very well. So, so 2012, came, 2012 came, and we still had the same concerns. Until now, 2023, I am 80. It was clear that we couldn't keep procrastinating. A generation of uh, younger boys around me persuaded me, overruled me, and so we have the event of today. And it turns out I need not have worried. This is a full hall that, as I said earlier, represents Nigeria. It is my hope and wish that this kind of variety, this kind of uh, solidarity, would apply in other domains too. We are gradually go getting to a point where the politics can be so, so bitter that even people who had known themselves for years are not able to communicate in public, only in private. As traditional father, this bothers us. Politics is about finding common ground. It's about finding the best of three polarities. The adversarial model of politics from foreign lands was designed to produce a mean that is the best of the two. Now it has become a source for rancor, a source for rivalry, a source for destruction, a source that cuts off normal social interaction. The traditional father were clearly worried by this. The next point are fashions of all kinds. My own petroleum profession is very well represented here. You've seen a few of them come out to felicitate with me. There are so many other pro professions present here. But beyond the professions are people who toil faithfully, honestly, most of their lives, either tilling the ground or fishing in the creeks, doing one thing or the other. Without their effort, we would not survive. All the food stuff we find here is the product of the labor of people who are dedicated to toil. And we appreciate that. And it's only by God's grace that these things are the way they are. There are some toil without recognition, but they too are the children of God. And they too are honored, just as we that are privileged are honored. We must give them credit. There are, there are, there are great statesmen who have handled responsibility at very high levels in this country. And we remember especially 
people in the offices and people in lower positions who do their best diligently. And that brings me to the third item, which is diligence and care and honesty in all that we do. I'm so grateful to have this honor bestowed on me by your presence, but I'm even more honored to think that it is not necessarily what I achieved by way of results, but the diligence that I brought to it. That at least I can claim. That when faced with a task, I try to do my best to my utmost, leaving nothing behind. And when you do that, you get the peace that comes with diligence because you have left nothing behind. I would like to think the results are of God, not man's making. We make the input, but God decides the outcome. You can plant the seed. You cannot pull it to grow. God miraculously makes it to grow. And the rain falls, so what I eat is none of your doing. So let us not be tired of doing diligent work, sowing the seed diligently, allowing other people equal opportunity to also plant their own seed and allow God to bring the harvest, which he always does. I am very, very happy that the issue of legacy, which has been blazoned on the back of the books, is actually not what I would have liked. So here you have a book fresh out of the mint, but I'm saying when we come round to the next edition, the next print, the back should be reading diligence, 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 not legacy. Because it's not about results. It's about effort. I know that in the Western world, efforts don't count. Corporate bottom line is what matters. And it is a jingo of management that people are not judged by what they do, but by the results they produce. No. It is not a matter of the means justifying, uh, the, the end justifying the means. It is not. Some means are just not permissible. They're not permissible before God. They're not permissible before man. So means and intentions matter. And it might well be, I don't know how long it will be, the day will still come when diligence and honest labor and fair dealing will yet again matter in this country. Because the lack of it is actually the factor that is dragging us back. Uh, once again, let me thank everybody that has taken the time to come here. I've been given 160 years by His Eminence Sultan when he spoke. I, cl I claim it with both hands. <laughs> Only gave me another double which makes it another 160. When you add two of them, I'm getting into biblical realms of longevity. <laughs> I open my hands. I only pray that the oil should keep flowing because that is what ends the dollars with which we do everything else. So to keep it short and to the point and to be interesting still, once again, as you have come safely, let me pray to Almighty God to see you back to your various destinations and may God keep all of us. May he give us length of days, and may he give us the ability and the capacity to show diligence in everything we do. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Can we please applaud him? His heart radiates with joy. Like I said, he did not come up here to thank you, no. Rather, I came up here to appreciate your love. The proper thank you will come at the proper time. We are going to do something very quickly, very, very quickly. It's not going to be the normal kind of panel, but because... A lot of persons still want to launch. We are not stopping you. Yeah, while our traditional fathers, some of them are taking their leave, it would be nice that we sit down. We will never close. We will never close. Okay, okay, okay. 
this one real quick, babe. All protocols observed, your royal highnesses. My name is Frederick Osho, the Deputy General Manager of Brass Petroleum Products Terminal Limited, based in Baisa. On behalf of my company, BB, BPPT Limited, I'm launching this book, 10 copies for 2 million naira. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to have a very brief discussion around the team. We're all listening to Professor Paco deliver his lecture, Magnus Paco. So we're going to have a very brief lecture, very brief. So permit me to invite the moderator, Major General Chris. Garuba retired, CFR MNI, to come on stage while I invite Professor Benjamin Okaba, Dean of Postgraduate Studies, Prayer University of Tweke, and Professor Hope Egeha, a former Commissioner of Higher Education, Delta State and a professor in the University of Lagos. Can we please invite them? Even if it's for 10 minutes, let's talk around the team. Again, a brief discussion to be moderated by Major General Chris Garuba, retired. Professor Benjamin and Professor Hope are going to be discussed then. Please, can we just applaud them for the next 10 minutes or so? They will not stay longer than necessary. Just the three of them, please. Major General Chris is moderating. Professor Benjamin Okaba, who is the IS president, and Professor Hope Egaha. One more discussion is missing, I think. Hello, 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 hello. Um, the chairman of this occasion came, uh, Jaja of Opobo, the chief celebrant, our amiable. Uh, respected His Royal Majesty King Dr. Edmund Daukuru, C O N F I C. Other Royal Fathers here present, um, distinguished invited guests. Let me stand on the existing protocol because time is of the essence. Um, my name is Major General Chris Abutu Garba, retired, but not tired. I am the moderator of this session 
of discussions and we are going to talk about the theme of the book or the theme of the presentation by Professor uh, Quackall where he spoke about uh, uh, human capital, basically the imperative of economics in human capital development as it affects uh, security and uh, rural development, the case of uh, Niger Delta. Um, this occasion is in honor of our own revered king who is uh, celebrating his 80th birthday today. And I know from the size of this house, which is a full house, you don't need any explanation why we're all here. Our king is, uh, is more than a textbook. Is uh, anything you can think of, but uh, we don't have much time to uh, discuss the, the lecture, because if we do, I can assure you we're going to be here till next Christmas. Not this one. We're going to be here till uh, Christmas of 2024. So we'll try and uh, talk to the point and uh, um, uh, get out of this place. So uh, the, the discussants are here. I'm going to give them um, three, three minutes so that they can just uh, um, pass through, you know, just pass through the uh, public lecture uh, because, you know, from what Professor Parkle has said, if we have to review his book, then again, it's like writing another book, and there's no time for that. So we have two uh, great professors in our midst, and uh, I'll give them time to quickly speak to the point of the public lecture. Uh, thank you very much. You want to start? Um, Professor Egaga, I will start first to my right, Prof. Yeah. Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may I use a second to pay tribute to the celebrant today? It's an honor to meet you in person at your 80th, and we recognize your contribution to the development of the energy sector in Nigeria. Congratulations, sir. I pay, also pay special tribute to my king here, the Oroji of Okbe. Um, Umogu, Wosuto. I agree to you, sir. Now, um, to, to the point, I took two takeaways from Dr. Paco's presentation. The first point that struck me, which is not new, but which is very cardinal to life in the Niger Delta, speaking specifically, and then life in Nigeria, is that poor people can't pay for electricity. So what do we do to ensure that there is supply of electricity in the rural areas? If poor people cannot pay, if rural electricity is at 8%, if I quote him, how then can we have human capital development in the rural area? It is a troubling question but it is a good entry point into the post-lecture uh, discussions. Of course, energy security refers to availability, sustainability, and affordability. So if these are not present, does this not have an overwhelming implication on development. I'm not reinventing the wheel, but I would like to say that with the special natural resources which the Niger Delta has, I do know that the lecturer alluded to that, 
that development of the Niger Delta should be a foregone conclusion because it is the energy source of the Nigerian nation. I therefore suggest that now that power has been liberalized, removed from the exclusive list, the governors, the political leaders in the Niger Delta should synergize and ensure that there is sufficient power generation, supply, and distribution in the Niger Delta. Of course, we know the multiplier effect of that in the economy. It affects the fisherman's ability to store his produce. It affects the customer. It affects a hairdresser. It affects a student. It affects the political and economic institutions. So we cannot toy with that. So if we are, we're not going to wait for an angel to come from the federal level. The Niger Delta, in my view, should come together, synergize, and ensure that that is done for the people of the Niger Delta. If poor people cannot afford it, there ought to be a bridge because poverty is a universal phenomenon. It's everywhere in the world. But states have devised means to ensure availability and affordability. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Prof. Um, is, it, is it working? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Professor Benjamin Okaba, President of the National Congress. Uh, let me stand on all existing protocol. First and foremost, I wish to congratulate our daddy, highly respected the German, Joe King, uh, on this special occasion. Uh, the INC uh, congratulates you. The INC uh, wish that you, you prosper in health, you prosper in wisdom, in character, and what all ramifications. Um, on the subject matter of discourse, uh, two issues, one, energy security, and the one, second has to do with rural development, uh, using the Niger Delta as a case study. I have just three interventions. Uh, I don't intend to replicate what others have said. Uh, first and foremost is to observe that the guest lecturer interrogated the issues from a purely economic point of view. And uh, that is one of the problems we have uh, dealing with the rural elements. Um, as a sociologist who always advise that the rural people should be seen as a special social entity, a special social class. They don't need anybody's pity. They need, they deserve development. They deserve equity. They deserve to be treated as people in urban areas because they are majorly the, 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 they are contributions to development uh, across the country is something that nobody can play with. Uh, over the years, we have treated rural dwellers as spinners of rural of raw materials. Then when we look for elections, we go over there to get Zumbo votes. Thereafter, they are neglected. The question of the Niger Delta is a question of criminal neglect, of question of degradation, a question of a people that are marginalized, a question of, of people that are exploited. So developing the Niger Delta should go beyond economic indices. They should be seen as a special social category and be treated equally. Um, so in, even in a national policy, when we talk about rural dwellers, you see attachments of agriculture. No, these people are not just there for agricultural purposes, to provide raw materials, to provide avenues for 
for rope production. They also need to be treated properly. And in fact, unless we have even development across, across the country without dichotomies as to urban and, and rural, we shall not have peace and development all over. Because if the rural areas are not properly developed, it dialectically affects life, life and livelihood in urban centers. One of the consequences is the, the um, rural urban migration. You see a lot of people considering rural areas not good enough for anybody. Then on the issue of energy, I want to pointedly say that as a country, we have no business having or experiencing energy scarcity or security because we have energy in our border. In fact, the 10 sources of energy all over the world are in full abundance in Nigeria. Our problem is the management of these resources. We have them in our border. We have sun, we have wind, we have geothermal, we have solar, we have all categories of energy. Proper management of these resources is what we require. It's not just having the wealth, the management, management of this wealth. And that is, brings to fore the leadership question. And I think if we address the leadership question, we should be able to also deal with the issue of human capital development. Having leaders who also know that we need leaders, we need human beings to drive the processes to bring about economic development and educational development. So that is my intervention. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, Professor. You see, if we look back, if we go to 63 years back, um, the thinking then was that Nigeria was living in a country where there was um, rural, urban drift. In fact, at the time of independence, we, I mean, the figure stood at 70% um, rural, 30% urban. But um, 63 years after, things appeared not to have changed for the better, rather it's gone worse. If we look at the statistics which uh, Professor Parkle mentioned uh, in relation to, to power at the rural areas, or nationwide, we used uh, Nigeria, for example, saying that, okay, uh, you look at Egypt, uh, power is generally 100%, uh, Australia, wrong, Algeria, uh, power is about 100%, and our neighboring Ghana, power is virtually 66% or thereabout. And it comes to Nigeria, it's less than 30%. You see? And that's for the whole country. Not to talk of the rural areas. So we're in trouble. There is therefore a need for our leaders, the traditional institution, and our political leaders to cry out. There's need for more to happen. Otherwise, um, human capacity development is not going to be um, good for the future generations. I thank you for the opportunity given to us to review it. And uh, we don't have much time left, so we come to the end of this discussion. OK. Um, the discussions have requested for one, one minute to wrap up. So if you don't mind, I'll give them one minute. You see, we're in a democracy. We're not going to go to court. So I'll, I'll give them one, one minute. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to uh, make this point very clear. Uh, rural is an operational word for an area that lacks social amenities. It's an operational word for an area where the population is sparse and settlement patterns are diverse. It's also an operational word 
for defining uh, the preponderance of primary occupation. We don't have industrialization in those areas. So it's possible to also have rurality in urban centers. If a place in Abuja, for instance, call Abuja geographically, has no light, where there, there are no industries, where people are denied of the basic things of life, it's rural. So that has to be uh, borne in mind when redefined. We have a Nigeria where we say Ministry of Rural Development and Agriculture. No, agriculture should be separated from rural life because the rural life is the totality. And she will be seen as a people who needs, like I said earlier, who needs equity. Whatever that is available in urban centers should, be, should percolate to the rural areas. It is by so doing. And that synergy of having a, a, a sort of equilibrium that there can be peace, not only for the rural areas, but for the urban center. If not, urban facilities will be overstressed if there is the, uh, there's a continuity in the drift of persons from rural areas to urban centers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Moderator. Um, the final point I should make is that we have enough natural resources in the country to generate enough power, both for the rural and for the urban centers of Nigeria. We have enough for hydrogen, we have for gas, and um, all, all the rest. Indeed, we now have enough human capital to drive it. What we need is the will. Remember that energy security is important to economic development, to political development, to development of human capital. If we remember this as leaders, as elites, let us make the effort, as His Royal Highness had said, we need to make the right effort. The results may not be achieved immediately, but once the efforts are in the right direction, hopefully in no time we arrive at our destination. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. And uh, the efforts will have to come from each and every one of us, not only the traditional uh, institution, not only uh, government, not only uh, politicians, but you and I must make concerted efforts to improve the situation because we are the beneficiaries. We are the ones living everywhere in the rural areas, in the urban centers. So we must take the destiny of our welfare into our hands. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your kind attention. And uh, we wish the king many more years of good health, happiness, and every success in the years to come. Thank you, sir. Please applaud them. Applaud them. Thank you very much. Wonderful discussions. Thank you, Major General Chris Garuba, retired. Thank you very much, Professor Benjamin Okaba. Thank you very much, Professor Hope. Please thank you very much. Yeah. Applaud them. Thank you very much, sir. We started a journey celebrating an icon, celebrating a man of many parts, celebrating a king, celebrating a treaty king. A treaty king of all brass people. A man who has held firm to the very rich cultural values of the Nembe people. A man who, as a geologist, excelled in shell. A man whom, as group managing director, excelled at the NNPC. A man who went to OPEC. He served this country as a minister, been called by his people to lead them 
and so far he has done so well. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit us at this time, like the hymn writer would say, Lord, I would own thy tender care and all the love to me. Thy food I eat, thy clothes I wear are all bestowed by thee. To move a vote of thanks this afternoon, no less a person than the chairman of the planning committee. Please put your hands together. Prince John Dakuru, can we please applaud him as he walks out here majestically to thank you for honoring his father on this day. Can you please applaud him as he comes? While we wait for him, and announce lunch. Yeah. Lunch is served. Yes. So after the vote of thanks, my sister would pray. And after she had prayed, we can sit back and relax to eat our lunch. Such goodness. Love and tender care I never can repay But may it be my daily prayer To love thee and obey True patriotism is instituted in patriotic obedience to our traditions, our hierarchies. Even in scripture, it is said that whatever our prayers want to be or need to be, we begin by praying for our kings, for those in leadership and authority over us. And we trust that as we, in obedience, do by scripture, what is heaven's will by God, then truly our prayer as a nation, O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause, will truly bring the guidance and help for our youth the truth to know. The power of love and honesty to grow and living just and true, great lofty heights attain to build a nation and kingdoms in that nation where peace and justice reign with an amen that actually has rephrased the second verse of our national anthem, which is by constitutional representation, our national prayer for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We bring a seal that is a blessing by God upon all of the engagement, the interactions, and the expression of friendships, both professionally and by royalty here that have in this room converged and become a community of celebration for his royal highness his majesty even as we any moment will have prince john dakaru come up the alternate chairman would do us the stand in honors thank you on behalf of the royal prince thank you thank you your Excellencies, Your Eminence, Your Majesties, Royal Fathers of the Day, Ladies and Gentlemen, we thank you all for giving us this honor. It is an honor 
to tell our beloved king. I'm speak, my name is Aibemi, Chief Aibemi Nauru Eboma. I'm speaking on behalf of the chairman, Prince John Dakoru. Due to work exigency, it's taking him long to be here. So, work as related to this occasion, it's taking him long to be here. So, I had to take this vote of thanks. Our father here is one of the most loved father by us. Whenever we look at him, we wish we'd be like him. We always ask him to pray for us so that we can be like him. And on this, his 80th year, we say no matter how, small or big, let's call the world in the way we can to celebrate with you. And today, you all are here to honor this call. We say a very big thank you. From the depth of our hearts, we say a very big thank you. The Lord that has brought you here will honor you. As you have honored and stay the realm, and 80 years old, you will also get to 80 years old. And your children will honor you. Just as we have done it for our father. Just as we have honored our father. We know that this is a seed that we have sowed. That it will also come to us. We say thank you. Once more. We thank the chairman. You are really a chairman indeed the Amayanabo of Opobo Kingdom, Treaty King, natural ruler. You stood with your friend till this hour. Thank you very much. We, the committee, we say thank you very much. And we say thank you to all of you. The lunch is served. Please, we don't want our money to be wasted endeavor to eat. It's enough for all of us. It's enough. Um, they served it a bit late when people have started leaving. But please, endeavor to eat. After now, we'll be taking photo shoots with the celebrant while people are eating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think it's important to announce that lunch was not served late. So that your royal highnesses are not worried, we made sure that the tea break was being served simultaneously. Lunch was set up, and as everything was set up, everybody was given an opportunity while your majesties were seated to be properly entertained, both from the tea break to an early lunch call. Thank you.
Eminence, Your Majesties. We still have someone that wants to launch the book. And um, this particular company is our major tenant in Nembe Kingdom. We are surprised that they are coming at this time. I call on ITO E and P. ITO E and P. Are they here? Your Eminence, yes, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, I apologize for my lateness at this uh, activity. Nonetheless, it is said that um, it is better late than never. Your Eminence, <laughs> ITO will always be part of whatever you do. And in the circumstance, on behalf of the entire global group of ITEO, I announce a donation to launch the two books with a sum of 10 million naira. Thank you very much, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Two books. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. 